whatever it takes. You leave it all in that field. And y'all know what time it is, baby. Each and every Saturday is critical when you're trying to win a championship. Anytime we've been down, we've put ourselves right back in the mix. We want to come out and, and push each other and be great. We are built for this. People think they're throwing water, want our fire, and they're actually just adding gas to it. We are coming out there with something to prove. It's the way we go play. A flawless Saturday afternoon in Southern California and in the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. In the centennial season, it's the biggest USC home game. Must win mode for the Trojans against undefeated Washington. Welcome to Saturday Night Football on ABC presented by Capital One. In this presentation of the Pac-12 on ESPN, this is the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. Washington comes in at number five, the initial CFP rankings, the lowest ranked undefeated power five team. But the Huskies beginning tonight here, a chance to polish up the resume. It feels like they control their destiny to make the CFP. Oregon right behind them at number six. Great to have you with us once again back in L.A. Chris Fowler, Kirk Herbstreit, Hollywell will join us. This is another one of those down-the-stretch games in the Pac-12 for USC. Must win to stay alive for the conference race. For Washington, they're thinking about bigger things. Yeah, I mean, you get to that first weekend in November, and the rankings came out this past Tuesday, and all of a sudden, the pressure starts to dial up. And that's where we are, I think, with this football game. Washington's had a couple games since the game you and I called in, uh, in Seattle where they've just kind of found a way to survive in advance. That will not get it done tonight against Caleb Williams and the Trojans. Yeah, we got a tremendous quarterback duel. Michael Pennis Jr., number one in the country in yards per game. He's had a couple of off games by his high standards. He feels much better today. He was dealing with the flu in tight wins against Arizona State and Stanford. Got to control the turnovers. That's been the problem the last couple weeks. Yeah. I think the biggest thing that I've seen with this team is uh, they're, they're still a young team with Kalen DeBoer. I think they play up or down to their opponent. I think with Michael Penix, the, he's, he's gotten the, you know, didn't feel the best as far as his health. That's behind him. Big playability all over this offense. You and I were talking before we came on the air. The biggest concern you have if you're USC and a defense has given up a ton of big plays is can they get to him? He doesn't take a lot of sacks. Can they get pressure? Because if they can't, get ready to get your track shoes on. Seattle, or Washington's going to score a lot of points. Uh, Penix numbers this year very comparable to Caleb Williams Heisman winners through uh, Heisman numbers through eight games a year ago Caleb still battling remember they just have that one conference loss the narrow walk-off loss here to Utah on a field goal late and he's still battling yeah oh he, but I think the entire team is battling and I think they realize there's still a lot to ac accomplish in this year forget about playoff forget about that for to me it's it's Caleb Williams and USC trying to beat a great team like Washington and kind of get their their season back where it needs to be competing for a Pac-12 championship you're still alive I mean USC has a team with this offense at Caleb Williams where they can go in the middle of the ring tonight go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Michael Penix and it has a feel at least going in a chance to be a shootout which quarterback has the ball last type of game our Sean Lloyd the top running back for USC out of this game injured Washington's defense has been vulnerable to big plays will we see a shootout here in a beautiful beach say in Southern California glad they're with us from the Coliseum the Nissan pregame drive is next after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome to the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. We are all excited to watch the match. That was the kind of high level moment that the world is waiting for. A spotlight always surrounded by noise. Welcome to the Penix Show. For Michael Penix Jr. and the Huskies, possibilities on the horizon only intensify there. What a throw. Washington takes the lead. My goodness. We just got to make sure that we're not worried about the outside noise. If you understand the simultaneous squeeze, praise, and punch like Caleb Williams. There's still something to play for. You keep fighting. You didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. The human joystick is like a magic trick. How do you stop that? One, two, three, top of the magic. How do they combat that relentless racket? By doing what they've always done. Make their own noise. Let's go, man! The Coliseum is about to get loud. Put on your seatbelt. 
That's the first meeting in this series since 19. The first visit to the Coliseum by the Huskies since 2015. We're set for this great quarterback duel. Washington, slight favorites, riding a 15-game winning streak, haven't lost in more than a year. Here's Kalen DeBoer with Holly. Well, Coach, you said that your quarterback gives this team so much energy. He's been battling the flu the last couple of weeks. What have you seen from him that lets you know he's ready to give all that energy? Yeah, he's had a great week. Our, our team's had a great week, and we're we're ready for this. this is why you come to UW to be part of moments like this. You're facing a Heisman Trophy winner. USC's a vaunted program. You guys haven't been here for a long time. How does your team handle all of that, the name on the jersey? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's been a lot of times where we've been underdogs, and you know, when you're facing the Heisman, uh, reigning Heisman Trophy candidate or winner, um, you know, you know it's going to take an extra special effort. And uh, he makes a lot of plays. Um, it's a great challenge for us, and we're looking forward to it. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, thank you. Very demanding stretch run beginning tonight. Caleb Williams, number one on most people's draft board, number two in pass yards behind Penix. You can see these guys have been extremely productive spectacular the two best big play quarterbacks in the sport against defenses that give up a lot of big plays as you said hey it's, yeah, it makes for great, makes for great tv are those numbers any good <laughs> and boy what a job they have done i know they've done it for a while now but first time for us to see the totally finished product here at the la coliseum incredible beautiful setting late arriving but it will be a sellout here Lincoln Riley said we'll take the football after USC won the toss. So there is Zachariah Branch, the speedster, the electric true freshman returner, back to receive the opening kickoff from Grady Gross. And we'll see Caleb and company in about a minute. Gross's boot is going to bounce into the end zone. So here comes Caleb Williams. You know, can they pressure him? The pass protection is broken down. Washington has a very aggressive and effective pass rush. He may have to be on the move creating magic, which he's good at doing. Yeah, I, I, he's one of the best we've ever seen in the college game. It, it, it getting off platform, being able to create. And, and I think that's Washington's biggest concern is when he gets out, they're going to try to contain him the best they can. And if not, he's got a heck of a group of receivers to make big plays downfield with. Austin Jones gets a sort of tailback again. Marshawn Lloyd, their top rusher, is out. Took a hit late in the victory over Cal. Williams to throw in the first play, and he finds Branch, and there's Zachariah dragged down after about a seven-yard game by Dom Hampton. Here are the impact players when SC has the football. There's a lot of speed. Todd Washington, 16, has been the most consistent. Chris, you touched on Lloyd being out. Austin Jones, a Stanford transfer, has to step up. And Braylon Trice on the outside has to get that pressure. After eight yards in the first completion, they test the middle, and... Yulafosio made the stop right near the mark. He's going to be just short, so it's third and short. Here's that Huskies defensive front. Look at SC up front as well, Chris. The concern that they have really as much as anything tonight is that right side. It's been a little bit of a revolving door trying to find the right combination. Washington has not at all been a good third and short defense. Rarely do they get off the field in these situations, and Jones has to work for it, but just leans for a first down to the 37. They're just trying to shoot gaps. Linebackers doing a really good job on that short yardage, but not able to contain them and keep them from getting the first down. They're going more tempo. That's a, that's a trademark of... Not just Caleb Williams, but of course going back to the Oklahoma days with Lincoln Riley with some of the great quarterbacks that he has had. They'll change their tempos up, but they'll give you the feel that they're going fastball. Yeah, very tactical. They don't crank it like they did in Oklahoma when Riley was there. Williams keeps it on the edge and flips it to Taj Washington, and the Trojans' top receiver slips one tackle and has wrestled down at the 45. Another strong first down game. Well, it gives you a quick idea of what the ends of this defense are going to have to deal with tonight with so many moving parts, different motions, couple guys, and he's thinking, should I collapse? Do I need to get outside? That's tough. Keeps it, pitches it to the edge, and then again, Kyron Hudson makes the catch, and it's a kind of extended running play. Right? It is. It is. And, and when they go fast, it, it makes it really hard. And Washington that time couldn't even get lined up. You know, they, they were looking to the sideline, communicating with each other. Even right now, I'm looking out there, and I see a couple guys kind of 
with their shoulders up saying, what's the call, what's the call? So Washington's got to do a great job of getting the calls in fast. Third time, Caleb looking to throw on first down on the move and creates off-platform to Hudson again. Well, they're getting some nice chunk plays on first down so far. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it, this is a great part of their script. Caleb Williams in complete control. And the thing you're going to watch tonight, and there was an example there with, with Hudson, who's a physical receiver, is how they adjust when he scrambles. Flip it up the near side. This is Lake McCree, the tight end, and he's knocked down. Huskies defense uh, backpedaling here. Trojans at the 38. And they're doing a good job of in attacking those ends, making them have to think with that ball fake, they have to respect it. And when he's pulling it, he's rolling out that same way, breaking contain. He's got a free play. Huskies jumped outside. Williams launches downfield. Looking for Brendan Rice, who was well covered. No chance to make a play. Thought he'd take a shot. He'll get to five yards Offside. here. Defense number four. Five-yard penalty. Replay first down. But Caleb in complete command out there. That time on first and ten. Just mixing in a hard count with that hard clap. Watch him with the clap. Draws him off. Washington as a defense right now. You talk about coming into a game. You know what to expect with 13. You know what to expect. And all of a sudden, it's the reality on that first drive. They are on their heels trying to adjust to a lot of different formations and a lot of tempo and a really talented offense with great skill led by Caleb. Short throws for Williams, five for five to start on first and five. Takes a deep drop, looks for the end zone. Over the head of Dorian Singer, the Arizona transfer. He was ahead of Elijah Jackson. There's a flag down back near the offensive line. Well, it gets one-on-one -on -one here, gets behind him. He stacks him. It's it's a chance to make a big play. And the Caleb, the ball gets out just a little bit late. That's why it goes beyond the field of play. Got the left tackle, Kirk Jonah Mannheim, with a hold. There's Braylon Trice coming off maybe his best game of, of the year. He had 16 pressures against Stanford. He's really the, the leader and the alpha, that defensive front, number eight, on the right side. This time he's lined up to the left. A bunch of guys grabbing jerseys in their protection. A high priority for this USC offensive line. And now Jones lowers the shoulder and delivers a blow to Thaddeus Dixon. This is what I love about this offense, because as much as they get you out on the edge and you think about Caleb Williams, with Austin Jones in there, you better respect the physicality of the downhill run game. And when they can combine that, just to keep you honest with the linebackers and those edge players, you can get back to work in the, the perimeter again. Jones will get a heavier workload that he's used to again with Lloyd out. He's got the football again. He shoots through a gap and dragged down a yard short of the marker by Carson Bruner. Third and one. Here's the old Oklahoma play, that counter play. They pull the right guard and the right tackle around. And what's great for USC is they're, they're playing on their terms. It's a lot of second and short and third and short when they even get to third down. Tenth play of the opening drive. Need about a yard and a half. Williams on the edge, makes a man miss. Look at the spin move from Caleb, and he's out of bounds inside the red zone with a first down. But everybody thinks that it's, it's Trice coming down to take away Austin Jones, but again, this is the beauty of what he can do. Caleb Williams is just not out there spinning it. Even though he can do it better than anybody it there, but but yeah, that's, it's just his threat to run the football in critical moments, and that time he read Braylon Trice perfectly. That was nice, a balletic move in the open field. Guy who has nine rushing touchdowns this year. That's an underappreciated part of his game. That's the most for any quarterback. Yeah. Washington just it's like they just need a timeout to, to gather themselves because of the barrage that Caleb Williams and the USC offense has brought to them. Here's his read right here on third and short. Once he collapses down, you just pull it. And then they makes this play, Chris, that you're talking about. I mean, the, the ability to make go forth miss, it's a lot like a Mahomes. You know, like Mahomes runs enough to make you realize that it's a threat. 
and they, it seems like they both do it at the critical moment in the game. You've been making that comparison with Mahomes since early in his career. Yeah, yeah. The, the off-platform throws, yeah, and wizardry. I think there's a lot of similarities, I mean, as far as the physical attributes and their arm angles and the different things that they do. It's un almost uncanny. You see what, of course, Mahomes can do. Look at them next to each other and watch how they throw on the run. You know, they, they get so much torque that their 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 flip of their wrist and they can throw that ball 35 40 yards on a line without really stepping into it so you'll see it tonight you'll see man, he looks a lot like Patrick Mahomes and what he can do in his ability to improvise and create the difference is he's on top of the draft board Mahomes coming out of college was passed trying to prove a lot of team yeah Williams keeps it again tries to elude go forth and just gets around the corner that's another positive first time play look like it could be trouble yeah it's the same things i mean he's reading that edge player this time washington knows when he reads him watch this he's not going to get fooled this time he knows that they give him that keep now i got to be in position last time he got around him and he picked up the first down this time he he's, he's able to get around him and pick up more positive yards so instead of maybe at the line of scrimmage picks up four or five yards around that side Ahead of schedule, every series of downs in this opening position, SC. Williams lofts it to the corner of the end zone. Look for Rice. There were two Husky defenders there. Two flags come out. Javian Green was in coverage. Tough to be on an island. Safety got over late, but really it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And, and, and Brendan Rice is a physical, athletic guy that's going to win. The pretty good coverage, but when he doesn't find the ball. Defense number zero. Foul the end zone. The ball will be placed at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. And once he loses the football, you see Rice trying to work back to it. He's going to be guilty of the pass interference. Rice, of course, the son of Jerry, who's been around a lot this season. We're told he'd be here today. Brendan, a transfer from Colorado, has been a big weapon down here in the red zone. Caleb's got a lot of weapons to choose from here. First and goal. Raleigh Brown, the true freshman, is in a tailback to the right of the quarterback. He's got it. And there's Spencer around the end, into the end zone. USC, what an impressive opening drive. Here's the AT&T 5G clicker. Watch how long he rides this. He's waiting to be able to make a decision. Waits, waits. He realizes that his back with that speed can get to the edge and outflank the defense. And that is how you open a game if you're USC trying to upset this Washington team. Brown's second year here was a five-star out of modern day high school in LA. Changed from receiver to running back, trusting the duties with Lloyd being out. What a start for Caleb Williams and the Trojans. And now the first position for Michael Penix Jr. and the Huskies offense. Undefeated UW has to try to quickly answer. Beautiful day in L.A. Good year providing the aerial coverage and celebrating the challenge of road games everywhere. Are you ready for the road? Good year. More driven. Seventh time this season in the 10 games, USC has scored a touchdown of the opening possession. The first carry of the year for Raleigh Brown. Hadn't played the last eight weeks. It's a redshirt season for him, but with Lloyd out, a chance to step up on a big stage and yeah. make an impact. Yeah, a special player, and you can see his versatility, what he brings to this offense, and cool that he steps up pretty cool the first time he gets a carry he takes it from Caleb Williams and scores in a big game he's got a different gear doesn't he got around the edge in a hurry yeah. Nangata lets it bounce over his head so USC's defense depleted and Michael Penix Jr. to appreciate the last couple of years you have to look at the injuries he suffered in Indiana two ACLs AC joints in both shoulders, but he's been healthy and has now put together a second consecutive spectacular season up in Seattle. And think about that. You have four seasons that end in injury. Gets out to Seattle, puts it together last year, and then what he's been able to do so far this year. Excited to see him and this offense. Since that Oregon game, it's not quite been the same, but I think we're going to see more of what we saw that day with the execution.
Empty backfield, low throw. It was a rainy day in Seattle. They took on Arizona State, which has been kind of a nemesis for Washington over the years. And he had the flu. He was kept away from the team. The stats are amazing, but the interceptions, you know, three of the six in the last couple of games had a fumble against the Sun Devils, but they persevered and got the W. And, and that was it when he was younger at Indiana. That was the thing. He would force balls like any young quarterback and, and just trust his arms so much. He'd just try to get him in those tight windows. And last couple of weeks, he's gone back to that a bit. Under center, hands off to Dylan Johnson in the Mississippi State transfer. An aggressive stiff arm shoves a man to the ground and gets a first down. Bryson Shaw got trucked. I love love watching Dylan Johnson run the football, but let's focus not just on him, but Odunze, Odunze on the outside, number one, of course, along with Polk, one and two, their go-to players. Damani Jackson and Christian Roland Wallace, they're going to try to hold up on islands because USC will stack the line. They'll blitz. They're going to try to get after Penix, so these corners are going to have to do a good job holding up against arguably one of the best groups of receivers in, in college football. Yeah, you're right. Hold up. Next man up. It's depleted back there. There's Johnson with a power run for about four. This Huskies offensive line's been stout. Pass protection. They've allowed only five sacks of Michael Penix. These guys all grayed out really well on the pass block. Yes, he's got a good pass rush, but it's a serious challenge yeah. to get past these guys. Especially on the edge. The, the tackles as a tandem are as good as you'll see out here in the Pac-12. They do a great job. Both of those guys are NFL players. Five receivers, three to the right. Penix with a screen, finds a Dunze, has a block. It doesn't take much to get him free. And he bolts for a first down to the SC 41. Well, when you have the big play threat, they're going to rush three and watch what they do in the back end. They're going to drop eight. Look how deep they get. And you can get that ball underneath, give those linemen a chance to get out in front. There's a lot of room when a defense is dropping that deep. Off the first down, they play with some tempo. Trojans rush three. Penix has time and delivers a beautiful throw on the sidelines to Josh Cuevas, one of three tight ends for the Huskies who get involved. Playing fast again. Yeah, Cuevas with some nifty footwork there. It's a little stuttering go. That's a big man to get his feet down. Excellent execution. And how about that throw? Just a dart from Michael Penix. They did substitute to the Trojans a chance to bring on some fresh bodies here. Will Nixon, the sophomore Nebraska transfer, as the tailback takes it on the pitch. That's a crease. And Nixon knocked out hard after a seven yard game by Kalen Bullock. A little pin and pull there. Chris, your favorite off to the left. Nixon in the run. Just much like Kalen Williams in SC's offense. Quarterbacks get all the attention. Alex Drench on the right. Ryan Grubb, who's an outstanding offensive coordinator on the left. We know about Drench when he was in Oklahoma. Just trying to get his defense dialed in, especially in the red zone. Try to squeeze Penix. It's the goal for both of these defenses. Try to force some field goals instead of giving up touchdowns. Ryan Grubb wide in the crest of popularity. Alex Grinch hearing it from some ex-Trojan greats and others about the defense at SC. Penix across the middle. He finds Nixon and he gets the first down. Yeah, the Russian three. I, what Alex Grinch, at least on his first series, is doing, he, he's in a bend but don't break mentality. I don't want to give up the explosives. They've given up so many big plays throughout this season 37 passes of 20 yards or more that's 128th in a country so they are doing everything they can keep the ball in front of them at some point you got to come after Penix he has all day back there to throw it's too accurate to find an open receiver you got to pressure him Trojans really struggle in these goal to go situations for opponents Penix would expect seven points here based on history and finds Odunze. He's dragged down to the three by Damani Jackson. And it's as advertised. We just talked about our impact players. Jackson out there with Odunze. Pretty good job making that tackle. Odunze is a big guy. 6'3", 215, athletic, skilled, great ball skills, physical, brings everything to the table you'd want to see in a number one receiver. Yeah, the number seven overall prospect says Mel Kuyper for the draft. I see why. He's out to the left, covered by Christian Roland Wallace. Johnson back in a tailback. He's got the ball, but gets very little in the middle. It'll be third and goal. That time, SC getting off blocks. 
in the interior there. Looks like the big man, Bear Alexander, 90, who, of course, transferred from Georgia. He's been a little inconsistent. He's still a young player, has strong hands, and we saw those hands in his twitch there getting off that block. Extremely disruptive in the middle is number 90. Three tight ends in on third and goal. Johnson, he just waltzes in. Penix and the Huskies and Sir Caleb Williams and the Trojans, each quarterback five for five in the opening drive. Balotano, the left tackle, where I talked about, he brings a lot to the table. Watch the big man right here on a short yardage play. Look at that left side. You talk about physicality, getting low, having some power, just collapses that left side and opens it up there for big Dylan Johnson. We got heck of a game going here. Trojan fans have seen a lot of that. Opponents get close, they punch it in. It's a bend and then break approach for USC's defense in the first possession. Rose with the PAT. Well, all right, this would be fun. Seven apiece, in the Coliseum. The playoff race is so wide open. Who's going to survive the gauntlet? Playoff Top 25, Tuesday on ESPN. No drama so far at the top of the initial CFB rankings. Washington trying to keep it that way here. 100th season of the LA Coliseum. These two teams have been playing 100 years. Second possession for Williams and the Trojans. Caleb on the move, retreating. Spinning, trying to create, lofting downfield, and coming all the way across to make the grab is Brendan Rice, working for his quarterback. Well, that's the toughest thing, and Elijah Jackson just found out. I mean, he's got to try to plaster Rice. This is a really, really tough aspect, obviously, when a quarterback has this kind of ability, stays with him until he just can't, and what a catch and throw. Out quickly, Branch. Short game, nice tackle of the opening field by Thaddeus Dixon. Yeah, you know, that, that's the story of the game when Caleb Williams pulls out and you're out there playing man coverage against a really good, talented receiver. He's going left, he's going right, becomes backyard football. Tough to do the way Caleb Williams can find you open. You don't tackle Branch, you might not ever see him again. He's got a <laughs> tremendous acceleration. They bring late pressure, it's picked up, and Williams launching downfield again, trying to find Brendan Rice. Elijah Jackson had some help back there. Third and eight now. That was the first time they've taken a shot downfield. It's been a good mix, and, and again, there's Elijah Jackson on that island. Safety comes over late, and Powell, what a valuable player Powell is, had to pick six to save the game against Arizona State a few weeks ago, and now because of some injuries at safety, he's moving from nickel back to safety, playing a lot of different spots, number three. Big play here, Kirk, which defense can get a break of serve first? Trojans need eight. Huskies crowd the line, then back out. Williams against the four-man rush, steps up, launches down the middle. And it's dropped. It was a high throw, but Deuce Robinson had his hands on it and was thinking about six. Fourth down. Well, Caleb Williams comes off from the left, finds the open man, and I really think he's guilty as a young player thinking about where he's going to go with that football. 6'6, six, six, great hands, just dropped it. It's one of those things. That's what it's going to take, maybe, for a defense to, to get off the field here. A, a drop of what would have been, if not a touchdown, would have set the Trojans up in the red zone. Eddie Chaplitsky is a point of the run, and the fair catch made at the 20 yard line by Denzel Boston. So, this Pac 12 championship game path, Washington sitting atop the conference standings, but they have four games to go. Utah at home, tough one against Oregon State. Wazoo in the Apple Cup. You can see the computer predicts an SC victory today. SC's got a tough trip to Austin next week and then the Battle of Los Angeles. Just three games to go. They would have a bye before the Pac-12 championship game yeah. if they can get there. Yeah, tough, tough sledding, obviously, out here. You picked that music there on that graphic. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they do on Tuesdays. Penix has time, delivers a dart, is a flag out as the catch is made by Jalen Pope after a nine-yard gain. Another holding call here. 
Mark Duddy in charge of this Pac-12 crew this afternoon. Personal foul. Oh, get a Tripping. Oh, Offense God. number 72. Half the distance to the goal. Replay. First down. We got Parker Brails for the center who was a guard before shifting over earlier in the season. Chris, this is cool. Our cameras caught this. It's a true freshman. It just dropped a touchdown. Love to see Caleb Williams talking to him. And here's the penalty right here in the middle. Gets by him and he just says, all right, I can't block him. Bear Alexander, he gives him a kick. Trips him and they go backwards. First and 20 inside the 10. Around the end. It's Johnson gaining back almost the penalty yardage there. Come up with an eight yard gain. I know you and I and Holly and really enjoyed our talk with Dylan Johnson. Just a guy that kind of lights up a room. We were talking to him about how much we appreciated his style and his game. And started talking about his time in Mississippi State. And, and uh, you know, running in that air raid offense. Came out all the way out to Seattle from Starkville to be a part of this program and this offense. Playing with Michael Penix. They both fill in his story throughout the afternoon. He's out of the game. But the Mama, who has a dangerous throw, tried to find Jalen Polk. And jumping the route was Jalen Smith, the best defender on this team. Boy, Jalen Smith is known for his ability to make plays against the run. How about that play? I mean, that ball was perfectly thrown to the leverage, away from the leverage and outside. And he shows you he's not just known for coming up. He leaves him in tackles. He airs, gets in the air and knocks that ball away. Good instincts. Now SC's defense, a great chance to get off the field here on third and 12. Playing tight up here on the right. Here comes the blitz, possibly. He's showing. Pressure comes. Penix steps up, launches downfield, but it's over the head of Giles Jackson, who's back in action today. Bryson Shaw was covering, and they force a punt. Good job by Nixon right here, picking up that blitz. But remember we said they've been rushing three, dropping eight, sinking everybody back. This time they do dial it up. First time they really made Michael Penix feel that pressure, and they've saved it for a third down and long. Here is rare appearance, Kirk, from Jack McAllister. Only his 23rd punt of the season. And Zachariah Branch, the speedster, standing at the 42-yard line, trying to set the Trojans up in great field position. Low snap, McAllister has it blocked. It was messed up from the start. And USC special teams come up with a huge play. Cade Eldridge got in there, the tight end. It was slow to develop, wasn't it? It was. They, they, and it, it felt like he got that off a little bit late, and nobody picks him up. I tell you, his length really pays off there to be able to reach out and get that football. And SC, we finally see a couple punts. We wondered who's going to win the turnover margin, who's going to catch a break in special teams. And it's USC here early, and they give Caleb the ball inside the 10-yard line. Did they see a smile, a little bit, a little bit of a, a mood yeah, change. Deuce, Deuce Robinson after Deuce that Robinson. Prop, he said, bro, thank you. Thank you. How about this? First and goal from the eight to start the drive. Jones diving forward down to the one. This place has come to life, the Coliseum. How about that collision there? Big time hit. And for Bicky Lannon there, meeting Austin Jones. Jones runs hard. You lose the speed without Marshawn Lloyd, but you pick up with Austin Jones. Really tough running, especially between the tackles like that. Did it, did it get and battling an ankle injury, kind of playing hurt today. They weren't sure he could go. On second and goal, Caleb Williams, keeper, and crosses the plane for his 10th rushing touchdown. And the Trojans take advantage of the block punt. A very quick TD drive. And then, so many different zone read looks. Put that ball away, 1-3. There you go. Takes care of it. 
Reads Braylon Trice. Let's look at the progressive pylon cam. Good job getting over top of Muhammad. Protects the football and breaks the plane for the touchdown. You got the mouthpiece hanging out of his mouth trying to get a grip on the football. Man, he is such a maestro ball handling, Kirk. One of the many skills that he has. And the special teams get credit for this touchdown as SC jumps back on top in the final 35 seconds of the first quarter. Let's take a look here. You, you think the way Austin Jones is running, they're going to test Washington in between this area here. But instead, there's that look. How many times have we seen this? You make this read right here, decides to pull it. Now it's a foot race. And he beats him around the edge. Here's the punt block. So he put on 88, but it was it was number 19 normally Deuce Robinson. And there you go. Who, who knows whether Caleb gets credit for that little pep talk. He comes back in there, puts a different jersey on, sneaks out there in the punt block trip, uses that length. Oh, there yeah. you go. All right. It's tricky when they, no, they throw a different a jersey on right out there. It didn't fit him very well. Hey. But it would Congra matter. Congratulations, whether he's wearing 19 or 88, drops a touchdown, comes back, and makes a huge play on special teams. That's what the game's all about. Way to rebound. Good job. Maybe you should wear 88 the rest of the game. And God is going to bring it out. Hit hard and slam to the ground at the 21. Kevin Nagani in the studio keeping a close eye on the other big one tonight in Tuscaloosa. Hey, Kevin. Yes, sir, Chris. Time now for our Dr. Pepper Fansville studio update. And LSU's offense strikes first. Jaden Daniels to Malik Neighbors. Are you kidding me? And then Alabama responds. Jalen Milrow was already on the ground with a 23-yard touchdown run right here. He just added another touchdown. So Alabama right now has the lead. This happened moments ago. 14-7 tied. Back to you guys. They do a great job keeping you updated on what's going on elsewhere tonight within that showdown on the SEC West. Johnson. You know, Mississippi State to Seattle is an interesting progression. He says, I had to get out of my comfort zone. I had to do what's best for my family. And he loved the creativity of Ryan Grubb and this Washington offense. He loved playing with Penix as well. A lot of reasons to come to you. Yeah, he also has a young son, and he's thinking about his future, and he thinks this offense can really help him go to that next level and that dream that he has. Penix, short throw. That's a doomsday. Yeah, he said he celebrated, excuse me, uh, Giles Jackson celebrated uh, Halloween with his son. It was Buzz Lightyear. How about that? It's a good one. He had been Woody when he was a kid. <laughs> good first quarter here in the Coliseum. USC on top of the Huskies, 14-7. Except for the second quarter, ABC's Saturday Night Football. Presented by Capital One, 14-7 USC. As we begin the second quarter. Huskies have the football first and 10. And second possession, Penix, the third possession. Punted last time after scoring on the opening drive. Reverse. Jeremy Bernard looked like he wanted to throw it. Says, wait a minute, there's too much space. I'll just take off. Motors out near midfield. Penix threw a block out there. Yeah, I, I love the motion, the jet motion. Watch the reaction as he goes. Watch the SC defense. Everybody's going to overload. They're blitzing downhill. Nobody's left on the back end. Good time to call that after a change of, of possession and on a first, uh, first and ten play. And that defense was out of position. Penix just cleared out Max Williams, the safety. Yeah. Preston just getting in the way. Oh. No. Shoved him in. Tybo Rogers in the game, takes the pitch. And another solid first down game. Again, they use that, that jet sweep motion instead of handing it. This time it's just a kind of a flash to make that secondary affect their eyes. They, Alex Drench told us coming into this game, the pre-snap movement, the jet motion, we got to be disciplined with our eyes tonight. Hey, 
Penix checks it down to Rodgers. Gets past the man. Tybo Rodgers, he's shifty. Moves down inside the USC 35. Another first down, 14 more yards. Well, he's a good looking young player on this team. And USC not only giving up big plays, but poor tackling this year. The seventh worst, seventh most missed tackles in college football. If he's able to make that play in space, it's a much shorter game. He does a great job. And now Dylan Johnson back in the game. Penix against a three-man rush has all day just slings it over the head of Jalen Polk that was recovered there. Holly? Well, you told us about Dylan Johnson. He said he does everything for his little boy, DJ Dylan Johnson Jr. He's been with his mom since they were in seventh grade. And here's little DJ as Buzz Lightyear. Of course, dad went as Woody, but he would not share that picture with me. But I had to show oh. you all this cuteness, guys. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, Johnson and guys had to persevere through serious knee injuries, getting a whole bunch of acupuncture and massage. Yeah, trying like, everything. Like, yeah. It's working. It looks great. Over the middle. Odunze with blockers. Showing great patience, juking down inside the 15. Another great call by Ryan Grubb. Look again. They're going to show blitz, and then they're going to get deep. And when they get deep, Michael Penix is showing maturity. He don't want to have to force the throw downfield. Let those linemen get in front of a Dunze and look at all that space again with linemen in front of it. Again, yardage in big chunks. 19 more on that pass play. Huskies in the red zone. Penix Pompey now launches to the end zone. Oh, you had Odunze wide open. He was lost back there. A rare misfire. And that pump fake that you refer to, that's what opened that up. The corner, Damani Jackson, he on that pump fake, he came up. And when he comes up, it's exactly what you want. Watch this right here. He reacts to the pump fake. So watch what happens behind him. There it is. Ooh, close for that touchdown. He doesn't miss those very often. More that pre-snap shifting four different dudes moving around. Now they get set. Play clock winding down on the edge. Johnson. And he motors all the way in. A flag comes out just before he crossed the goal line. There are four penalty flags on the field. I saw and a helmet. Helmet went off of a lineman and he kept playing. So I, I don't I don't know if it's gonna be that or you know, again they did that pin and pull. Blitz those linebackers in the interior. Nobody out on the edge to keep the contain. Personal foul. By Otano had it ripped off. Participating without a helmet. Offense number 55. It's a 15-yard penalty. And once that Replay, helmet, second down. Once your helmet goes off, unless it's, you know, if it's ripped off. Let, let's see. If, I don't know. 51. Bird got his hand on the face mask and pulled it off. Yeah, he actually did. But watch. Once he continues on, Bill. Even though it's ripped off his his head. You're allowed to finish the action you're involved in, but, but you he, cannot keep, go down and continue. I, I don't think he did go down and continue, actually. He, he did. Yeah, and he, that's why there's a foul. He couldn't help himself. He wanted another piece of another lineman. And his helmet came off from an inadvertent touch. It didn't okay. come off from a face mask. Right. The gate's a 14-yard run. Johnson's got it again. Battles back to the 22. <laughs> I guess there's something as inadvertently having your helmet ripped off by the guy down there in the pit. Yeah. Inadvertent I mean, stuff I, can happen. In yeah. Theory. I think Bird got his hand up in the face mask and it, and it came off. I think Bill, what he says for fans not familiar with that that foul, it's a great point about he can finish where he is, but if he continues to go downfield without a helmet, that's why he got called for it. I get it, but if a hand is in the face, why isn't that a hand in the face? Yeah. Yeah. Inadvertent, Bill said down there in the end. Yeah. Penix from the pocket, spins free. Trying to mirror Kate Williams' creativity, launches the end zone, caught! No signal, did he hold it? Yes! Devin caught the tight end! Penix creates some magic! How did he come down? How did he find him down there in the end zone? Boy, <laughs> this is... First of all, how did he get away from the, the pass rush? 
to keep this play alive. Look at the receivers working back, and instead, what a throw. He goes up and over everybody to the last guy you think that he would throw to. And Culp, 6'4", 240, a big tight end. Possession of the football. How does he hold on to this? There's how a lot of he, how does he in that play? How does he maintain possession with the, the arm in there? What an incredible catch. You got two quarterbacks who can make magic on this field tonight. Incredible escapability. You might say risky decision to throw it down there. There was a bunch of humanity guys from both teams down there in that corner. Yeah, and it was Eric Gentry, the, the linebacker that's on him. I mean, it was a great effort to just keep the play alive, and Michael Penix is known for that. He goes over a Dunze to, of all people, the big tight end who holds on to it for a Husky touchdown. Sunset approaching in L.A. Goodyear fighting the aerial coverage. Road tested and game ready. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear more driven. 79-yard drive by Washington in 10 plays. He overcome the penalty. Incredible third and 18 completion for the 22-yard touchdown by Michael Penix. To Devin Culp his second touchdown reception of the season. Elite vision, one of the best things he has going for him. Boy, there's a play by Zachariah Branch who kind of mishandled it, had to pick it up, but he stopped at the five, so Williams backed up for this possession. You know, you think about this, Penix has only thrown 11% of his throws outside of the pocket, but here's pressure, and he somehow spins out of this, but the most remarkable thing here is he's running for his life, is right here, he's looking at his two receivers. Here's the guy that ends up catching the play, the big tight end, Colt. But he doesn't see him until the last possible second, and he just kind of, let me just take a shot with that left hand rolling left. So he takes those two receivers out. His dad said, wow, both parents fired Mom, up. Mom, Mom Mom's sure like, did he are you sure? It? Did he catch that? Somehow he did. <laughs> and somehow our son saw him back there. That vision is astounding. So Branch with the mishandled kickoff. Backs him up at the five, and Jones immediately gets breathing room. First down across the 15. I think what's cool about you get into a battle like this with two quarterbacks. I mean, one quarterback won the Heisman last year. Another one could be favored to win it this year. And there's a tendency to want to out-duel the other. Right now, these guys are playing within themselves. Let the game come to them. Williams spins free, avoids the sack, and finds McCree. And the tight end is running free for a nine-yard game. Incredible display of elusiveness from both these quarterbacks. Now, it looked like they're trying to set up a, a tight end screen here. Now, you see the lineman getting out in front, and it's just the timing of it was off. Trice almost blew that up. Jones bursts through. Austin Jones barrels deep into Husky territory. And there's that look again where he gives him that zone read look. He's been pulling it a lot. This time he gets to the look to, to give it. Puts this, this defensive edge of both the, uh, the sides of this defense in a real predicament where at any moment he could pull it, get to the edge and run it, pull to the edge, get outside and throw it. This time he tested interior of the Washington defense, handing it off. It's the longest run allowed by Washington this season. Jones with 31 yards. There's averaging almost 10 yards in his first seven carries, stepping up with Lloyd down tonight. Blake like the two. This is Garlin Barlow. Doesn't matter who's got the rock for the Trojans. Huge gains all the way down to the one yard line. Darwin Barlow, the TCU transfer. Nice job here by the center. Gonna pull it around to help open that up. Mason Murphy. Look at the blocking downfield. That's Deuce Robinson, our guy, the big tight end receiver. So runs of 31 and now 43, and from the one, Barlow. Around the end, there's a flag down. Looks it, like there may have been too many folks on the field. Yeah, and Washington had too many. That was the vintage Caleb Williams and Lincoln Riley drive. I mean, that was an electric drive done mostly on the ground, Kirk. Two minutes to go, 95 yards in five plays. Wow. Again, I, I think when 
Washington's been out there. They're having a tough time just locating the football and settling in. They don't know if it's attacking inside or outside. The plan from Lincoln Riley and the execution from Caleb Williams. Washington's going to have to make some adjustments to try to slow down this plan because right now if they don't change, SC will continue to work that same mesh look that they've been mixing in. That's, that's what the look is every time. He gives it, sometimes he throws it. A lot of touchdowns. Third time tonight, they're up by seven. Unheralded Trojan stepping up with Marshawn Lloyd down tonight. First, it was Relique Brown scoring a touchdown on his first carry. Darwin Barlow gets in there, and Jones has been tough tonight. Yeah, I think it's really, again, about the package and, and how they're doing different things. It's the physicality of Austin Jones, but also, again, they're working the edge. How often is he putting that ball into the belly of the back and then getting out of the edge, running it, sometimes flipping it? He got into the end zone with a run, his first touchdown of the night. So that's what Washington is facing. And we'll see how they try to come up with some answers to slow down Caleb. Two longest runs the year allowed by the Huskies. Here, back-to-back -back plays in that possession. Big creases. Two offenses with incredible distributors. Ngata tries to bring it back from the one-yard line. Daniel Ngata knocked down at the 25. Great quarterbacks surrounded by playmakers and two defenses, to be fair, that have given up. A lot of big plays this season. It, it, it reminds me, you said breaking serve. It honestly does remind me of you and Johnny Mack and the boys calling it a, 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 a big grand slam, a Wimbledon. On the grass, a big serve. But I just, I, I just mean, you know, it's it's Federer and Rafa going back and forth with these two quarterbacks, and it's it's so impressive to watch. Not just a great game with a lot of speed, but the execution and the hype and the build up and you know we were coming in we thought 45 oh, 42 kind of game and, and it's actually living up to that kind of game with the way these two are playing Johnson takes his way spins for about five on first down and in fairness people that are watching this on a national level maybe fringe Pac-12 or Washington and USC fans are thinking oh they don't play any defense out there and you're right it, it, these aren't two great defenses but I have a feeling these offenses no matter who they match up with later down the road they're going to do this to a lot of teams that they play so it's a combination of defenses that are struggling and two really talented electrifying offenses as good as you'll see in the sport Johnson Tripped up just as he tried to burst through a crease there. Max Williams got a leg, but it's a first down after an 11-yard gain. He gets running downhill. He is incredibly physical. Good effort by Max Williams to get his shoulder in there to slow him down. Johnson gets overlooked, and yet he's always out there running the football. Tonight averaging close to six yards a carry. And he's his job is to make you respect and keep you honest in that run game. Penix under heavy pressure right away, complete behind the line of scrimmage. Going to pie to get it was Johnson, but Big Bear Alexander burst through a crease there. Yeah, he flashes. And when he transferred, I think a lot of people thought he could be a difference maker every single week, and I think he's going to work to become that. He look for an opportunity to be an every down player out at the USC, so he leaves Athens and I think he's just working as a young player just on being consistent every down and every week. Given name is Keithian, but you can see why he's got the nickname Bear, probably from a very young age. Nixon first ahead, not near midfield, another solid game. Second and 14, picked up 11. This offensive line is it's almost like a clinic tape on their run game. And, and keep in mind, they don't run the football that much. I mean, coming into the night, they only average 102 yards a game. They, it's usually all about Penix, but tonight against SC, I mean, it's a hat on a hat, climbing up to that second level, doing a really good job with their mechanics and technique up front. Jeremy Bernard looks like he's going to take a direct snap as they shift around. Penix is still in the game, and he'll run up under center. Uh-oh, nine. <laughs> USC going to shift around and respond to this and not ready for Gillen Johnson. Can they get him? Dive for the pylon. Touchdown!
touchdown, Dylan Johnson. 52 yards, and that free snap eye candy cut the Trojans off guard. That nine gets under center and everything changes. And here's the end of the play just to make sure he gets in. It's a foot race with Bullock trying to catch up. I don't think that right foot touched out of bounds. Here's a progressive pylon cam. Check that foot. Goes airborne, gets Ooh. to the pylon, as you see. You know when the ball hits the pylon. Yeah, that, that's clean. That's a touchdown for Washington. But again, I just talked about the offensive line, getting a hat on a hat. Oh, boy, did they do that again here. It's a very pass-heavy offense, as you said, one of the most pass-heavy in the country. But the ground game working tonight, 21 apiece. Offenses matching each other so far. Chris, let's go back to this touchdown. On the left side, you have Quentin Moore and Fatanu, uh, the left tackle. Watch the job that they do in just opening this up. Look at, look at that. And again, you're a little light up front. But the next thing to react to is the free safety. What's he delaying on? I mean, you're talking about an All-American and Kalen Bullock just hesitating to react. You're in man free, so the corners are all gone. They're locked up on receivers. It takes him a, a while to react to a, a really talented back coming at him in a hurry. And that late reaction gives Dylan Johnson a chance to get to the corner of the engine. You, you said they are a lot light up front. They yeah. just get ball. Holly? Well, guys, it's really interesting to be on the USC sideline. After they've lost their second game, a lot of people are saying, oh, well, Caleb Williams shut it down, yada, yada, yada. I promise you, this kid is as invested as I've ever seen. He is so magnificent with his wide receivers, encouraging, uplifting, leading. He'll be, like, right in the middle of hyping him up, like, you hear me, boy? You hear me? You hear me? And then he'll put somebody aside and say, hey, I need you to be a few inches longer on this route. He is just phenomenal to watch over here on the sideline. One of the best leaders I've seen, guys. And, and Holly, I, that's so good to talk about that because I think sometimes people have a perception of him not being that guy. I mean, you're, you're standing right there taking it in and seeing that. Williams, they leave him alone to the keeper. Easy money. Yeah, besides the individual brilliance, making guys better around him with the way he plays the game, it's those intangibles. You go to the walkthrough, he's still the last guy off the field. He is one of the guys. There's no separation at all between Heisman winner, rock star quarterback, already rich with the NIL, and the rest of the team. Zero. Yeah, yeah. Love, to, love, hear that. That. love to hear that. I think he's really in his third year growing, maturing, and it's much more than just his physical game. Of the play fade, Williams. How is he staying? Avoid that sack. Puts it out to McCree on the edge. Instead of, you know, like minus eight, they pick up like six there. Talk about putting on a show. Comes the pressure comes from the outside again. It's the guy that's been there most tonight. Brilliant tries, but he olays him. And then instead of forcing something downfield, he keeps his poise, finds the check out to the tight end, McCree. And instead of, like you say, a minus five, it's a gain of five. They've had pressure on him. They still haven't sacked him tonight. Neither quarterback has been taken to the ground. It's Jones in the crease. Jones spinning through. Not backward hard. That was a physical tackle delivered by Dom Hampton, but it's a first down. They're losing the battle up front. Hampton has to come up, but it's that same look. They're running it to the left and to the right. Austin Jones. Coming off that spin move right there gets that huge hit from Hampton But the same package Zone read and his athletic ability Enough times tonight running the football You think about the quarterbacks and receivers, but Dylan Johnson already over a hundred for the Huskies Austin Jones headed towards a hundred Catch made on the edge by Mario Williams slips he tries to get going. And a simple little throw, but it shows you the mechanics. And watch, watch him just kind of, it's like a shortstop. I, he doesn't even step into that throw. It allows him to have that quick release and just get the ball out. That rotational throwing that you see so many quarterbacks now using in the NFL and, and now in college. Even the younger quarterbacks learning all over the country that same style. But he's as good as you'll see in the college game for sure. Second and five, they hand it off to Branch. The receiver motion it, flips it back to Williams. Wide open 
and downfield is Taj Washington, who just walks in. Trickery by the Trojans. Take the lead one more time. 41-yard touchdown. Well, they get the ball in the hands of Branch, and his defense hurt all week. One gets the ball. Everybody take him away. He's too fast. He's electrifying. Then he flips it back, gives it to Caleb Williams, and they sneak their best receiver, Taj Washington, down the left sideline. The defense completely fooled. Give that one to Lincoln Riley on a play call. Beautiful. It's almost unfair. First touchdown pass for Williams. The first three SC scores came on the ground. And for the fourth time tonight, they're up by a touchdown. Well, we, we promised you fun tonight. Both these quarterbacks, both these offenses have delivered 28-21 SC. Capital One halftime report. Booker McFarland, Kevin Nagandi on the way. So we got Oregon in action. We got Michigan in action. We have highlights coming your way. Alabama and LSU. This one at the Coliseum. Is it first to 60? <laughs> no doubt about it. I think it's going to be which defense can limit the big plays and right now get the offense off the field on third down. You said plays curl. Plural. We just want one play. And one, <laughs> just with one stop. Any play whatsoever. Make the defensive guy happy. Chris, back to you. There's, there's no limiting going on here at all. Yeah. Last team of the ball, maybe, will decide this one. 4.04 for halftime. Penix will go back to work, and Yada tries to create some field position and works hard to get back where he would have been had they just taken a fair catch. Chris, let's watch this play again because it's unbelievable all the things that happened. Like I said, Zachariah Branch, he's one of the best guys in space in the country. This defense sees him. Jet sweep, you got to stop him. Look how Caleb sells it. Oh, I'm, the, I'm done. I'm, I'm done with the play. Zachariah reacts like, oh, no, they got me. Look at, look at Caleb. Defense completely fooled. And I know Caleb Williams appreciated that call there. The Victor Cruz-like celebration, a little Latin <laughs> dancing in the end zone. There he is. Good call, Coach. Boy, those two in sync tonight. Everything's in sync for this offense. Problem is, Washington gets the football at this point, and Penix would love to tie this game up before the break. Fair point. Five-yard penalty tacked on because the Trojans were offside on the kickoff, so they begin from the 30 with a clay fake on first down. Penix launching, and finally, Jalen Polk goes up and gets it. He's late to the party, makes an impact play for the first time. The number two receiver for 32 yards. Watch this safety right here, Bryson Shaw. He just kind of starts to freelance. There's nobody back there, and you can't do that against Michael Penix. Eyes downfield, he's been patient all night, checking down. That time, he sees a bust in coverage and makes him pay for it. Polk on the sideline after the catch. He'd been targeted a couple times. That's his first catch. A guy that has 600-yard games this season. Imagine that a one-wide receiver with 600-yard games. Odunze's got five. They're without Jalen McMillan again. Still battling that ankle injury, but no shortage of weapons. Yeah, no doubt. And, and when you get a counter like this, the patience of a runner is so important. If he would have bounced this outside, out here, he's got huge yards. Instead, he gets underneath. Didn't give it a chance to develop, or that's a big gain around the edge. Jackson motions out, empty backfield on second and 11 after a rare tackle for loss tonight in that first down run. Late pressure, Penix guns it, and it's incomplete. He had to deliver that one in a hurry. The rush was closing in on him, and Jackson couldn't grab it. Yeah, they dialed up the blitz and, and got the ball out, but still, it's accurate. Look where he throws it. You know, away from the defender, right on the chest, but good job by Christian Roland Wallace to get that ball out of there and set up this big third down. Booker making his wish here. Well, maybe they're in four-down territory, though, across the 50. Caleb saying, wait a second, we might get the football back here with a chance to extend the lead before halftime. They run it with Nixon on third and long, and he picks up only about four. So DeBoer, is he thinking, go for it on oh, yeah. fourth and about seven? Here. Yeah, I mean, you call that play to set up this play right here. He, he tried to get as many yards as he could. I think the way they've been running the ball, he thought he'd get at least five or six. Here is that chance for the service break you talked about. Johnson back in the game. Penix. Long. 
throw wide open is Odunze. How do you ignore the all-world wide receiver? It's a first and goal. Well, you do it because your eyes are in the backfield. And that's what happens right here. Watch him get lost out in space. Damani Jackson just kind of freelancing. Nothing really sound about that on a big fourth down play and how you lose number one. Usually you're going to roll coverage up on top of him with a safety over top. They just let him off the line free and completely lose him in coverage. Saw the exasperated look from Alex Grinch. That's been the story all season long for this defense. Dude's just making inexplicable decisions. They flip it short. Polk hammered after a short game. Good play by Roland Wallace there. Good to see Polk back out there after he went to the sideline. He's been battling a little bit of some stuff himself. They were wondering if he'd be okay. Missed a practice this week, but so far holding up just fine for Washington. He had some flu problems, just as his quarterback did. So SC you know, spends a timeout to get oriented on defense. It'll be second and goal. Man, just when it looks like a defense is in a great position to get that stop, you got him on fourth and six and a complete coverage bust. Yeah, I, and we've seen that. I mean, the, what SC is battling tonight, as you know, they, they are concerned about the big play with Donze and company downfield. So they're dropping a lot of people, but then they got to make tackles out in space. It's an area that they're, they've been one of the worst all year tackling in space because they had so many missed tackles there. You had Jackson, just, you saw it on the replay, just kind of looking into the backfield and staring at Penix, but not being having any awareness of where Udonze was or any receiver for that matter I'm, If I'm Washington, I'm working this clock. I know you want to get the ball in the end zone But you do not want to give Caleb Williams any time There's Bo Nix who scored too quickly and gave Penix time at the end of that Oregon Washington game up in Seattle When the Pac-12 you want the ball last. That's the key thing, right? <laughs> USC lost because Utah had time to go down the field and kick a field goal here in their last home game. Johnson leans to about the four. It'll be third and goal. That's a smart call. You, at the very least, you make Lincoln Riley use another timeout. He's down to one now, and he gets to third down and goal. Keep this in mind about USC. Their last five games, 42 points a game allowed. Only Temple has allowed more points per game during that five-week stretch. They came in to this game against this quarterback in this offense kind of limping, considering you're giving up 42 a game. Yeah, they're giving up huge yards on the ground to a team that really doesn't rush it that often, as you said. The ground game has really been missing from the Huskies the last couple of weeks. And they found it tonight. Offensive line is when they want to run, especially that left side. What do you like here on third and goal from the four? Is he thinking two I, plays? I, I would not mind another run. I really wouldn't. I mean, I know it puts you in fourth down, but you, they have such confidence in their ability to score. I'd run the football again. And if you score, great. If you don't, make Lincoln Riley use that last time out. Remember, Washington does get the ball to start the second half. Five receiver look. Johnson slot right. Trojan shifting around. Penix from the pocket against three-man rush. That was easy. Pitch and catch to Jalen Polk, who came alive on that drive. And Washington on the verge of tying this game for the fourth time. Caleb does have a minute 14 to work with, though. Yeah, he's got a lot of time, and he's got the one timeout. And again, Washington gets the ball to start the second half. This, this is a, another dart by Penix. And a, to me, it looked like some confusion by USC. You had man coverage on two of the receivers, and, and Polk is left alone. So they drop eight into coverage, and a man still breaks free yeah. over the middle. So on these three receivers, they go trips right here. Polk's on the outside. And watch the two on the inside. You see how they get manned up. See that man coverage? Now watch Polk. He's got two USC defenders, but they don't br bl uh, bracket him. They don't double him. He just go goes to the inside and finds a soft spot in the zone. And Bullock, number seven, right after the touchdown, he looks back almost to say, whoa, you know, what happened? 
So it looks at look at that dart. That is a thing of beauty. Sure is. Yeah, he doesn't work the middle of the field that much. Typically, Penix works to the edge, the perimeter, but he shows what he can do with these 21 NFL scouts and a couple of GMs here. They are seeing a show by these two quarterbacks. The, the Giants and the Broncos, yeah. I think the GMs are here. It's all the scouts on the field before the game. Touchdowns on each of the last three drives for both offenses. Interesting, Kirk, that Washington, all four of the touchdowns have come on third down plays. Very unusual. Yeah. Shows you that Penix doesn't flinch. You know, he gets to those critical towns and, and delivers. The Modelo mark of a fighter moment brought to you by Modelo. Uh, here's the drop right here by a true freshman, Deuce Robinson. And Caleb Williams, just going back to what Holly said, shows the maturity. Hey, man, stay in here. Stay in here. We're going we're gonna to need you. Comes in, switches a jersey for special teams, blocks the punt. This is right after Caleb Williams talked to him. He goes back, going to play wide receiver. But now he's downfield. He's not going to make a catch, but he makes a great block. I go all the way back to the Caleb Williams maturity and be able to keep that young freshman in the game. Another thing that the scouts will notice, too. He's a natural leader. He'll step into an NFL team and be a leader from day one, too. It's impressive. Back paddling. They got him with the first half. Lost the football. Caught the football up. It was knocked loose by Tupola Fatui. And Washington has a takeaway and a chance to claim the lead before halftime. Well, this is the one area of his game because he's so creative that you worry about. Watch the ball away from his body. Now, he makes a lot of plays, but CTF is able to get his hand on the ball and knock that thing loose. That's the one area. See that ball away from his body? He almost went behind to try to avoid the pressure. But in his ability to create and make plays that make you go, wow, how did he do it? You're going to have some plays like that. See, his 30th fumble, the most in the FBS since 2021. Critical for a couple of reasons. Huskies, two timeouts in a minute seven. Johnson barrels out inside the 10 because, as you pointed out, they get the football to begin the third quarter. Yeah, this is a big, big opportunity for Washington, as you call it. I guess Bill Belichick or somebody calls it the two for one. A lot of these coaches call it, but you try to put points on the board here and get the ball back. And in a game that's going back and forth, this is huge. But they've been answering all night. They've been yeah. coming from behind to tie things up. Now a chance to take their first lead. Johnson to the edge. Down to the one. Jalen Bullock made the tackle. No timeout taken yet. Chris, remember we talked about just a couple plays ago how he got impatient on his counterplay and cut it underneath? This time, there he goes, allows it to be able to get established in front of him. Then he's able to work around those blocks. So he cut it underneath a little prematurely a few plays ago. And this time, lets those linemen do what they do and then bounces it. Some confusion whether or not the timeout was taken is... It's uh, Will and Minge, one of the co-defensive coordinators, giving ZTF a hug there. They huddled up. The, the play clock, of the game clock, I should say, initially ran down to 18 seconds. They're resetting it at 30. It'll be third and one. Not sure why they spotted it, the ball. It, it, it's not spotted correctly. No. It, 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 it should have been down near the one. Yeah. Yeah, now, they're, now they've corrected it. Yeah, he wasn't anywhere close to going out of bounds. He's tackled it to one yard line. 30 seconds on the game clock. The game clock will begin on the ready for play. I would not. I goal. still wouldn't be in a hurry with Caleb Williams. Take your time. Johnson dives in, and the Huskies do cash in the Caleb fumble and take their first lead tonight. And in a game like this, 
we sometimes think nice job, nice about the turnover, or we sometimes think about a defensive stop. But the other thing is the blunder, the mistake that you can't afford to make, because then you get behind and you got to play catch up against that other quarterback. That was easy, but Dylan Johnson completes the hat trick in the first half. Rear high three touchdowns, 117 rushing yards for the guy we talked about a lot tonight, the transfer Mississippi State. Here's ZTF creating the opportunity for the offense, knocking the ball loose. Now this is the big play at this point in the game. And kid, again, Caleb Williams going to make a million great plays. He makes these two as well. We talked about how many fumbles he's had since his freshman year going back to Oklahoma. Balls on the ground, Washington gets it. And the offense capitalizes on that opportunity. And that is a fired up staff led by Ryan Grubb there. The offensive coordinator and play caller. Oh, he, sure. he knows how to find the camera when he scores, man. He's working right, right at it. Waving to his son. Not that time yet. Not when dad's having a night like this. Huskies Kirk with uh, four touchdowns here in the second quarter. In a tough first half for USC's defense. Yeah, 8.5 per play. 333 yards allowed. And the Huskies obviously perfect down in the red zone. So it's first one to 70. You got to keep upgrading <laughs> with the expected score. Of I thought 45-42. I thought that was crazy. Ali. Well, guys, a huge play and a big moment from Zion Tupu Olafetuai, and it's really beautiful. It's amazing that he's even playing tonight. He lost his father last Saturday. His dad was at home. We believe it was during the Stanford game. He had had some health problems for a long time, but a tragedy for this young man. He found out on the bus after that game, but here he is, his spirit still shining and making plays out here, even though his dad is not watching tonight. Oh, Holly, it's wonderful. Yeah. You know, sometimes when you have a tragedy like that, just being around your teammates, being around yeah. the guys they call their brothers uh, yeah. is a is great comfort. And he's doing what he loves to do out here tonight. Well, Williams has 20 seconds. Let's see, has one timeout. He launched downfield, and they'll just hand it off to Jones. And Jones spins and is knocked down to the 39. He I can don't, spend it if he wants to. I don't know about just. I mean, the clock stops. I'm looking over at Lincoln Riley. He gave Caleb Williams the good, let's go sign, so they're not done yet. Chooses to say the timeout with a spike. I mean, that, that, that zone read look, that, that's 12 times that they have called that. About 135 yards of offense, three touchdowns off of that, not to mention all the play action that they've done off that look. Need about 25 yards, Kurt, to get in comfortable range for Dennis Lynch. He was sitting from about 51 in pregame warm up, so got to get near the 35 of Washington. Williams taking a lot of time, now throws it short. Got to get out of bounds. Branch does after a short gain at the 45, but now just three seconds, and they'll have to heave it downfield for Hail Mary. Last play, an eventful first half. 600 yards of offense, nine touchdowns. Timeout spent by Riley to talk about this desperation you know, play. I mean, Kevin and Boog have a lot to cover. It's been a big day of college football all over the country. They're going to have to spend the whole half just on this first half. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we got Missouri, Georgia, and Florida State, and Pitt, and Texas, and Kansas State. Got to go back five this. years. I was scoring first half in this conference. In the final year of this conference, it's going to be very, very entertaining stretch run. We talked about the tough road ahead for Washington beginning tonight. Last stand for USC. They can't really take a loss here tonight and feel great about their chances of reaching Las Vegas. They got to go to Oregon next week. Very, very capable of turning things around after halftime. But can the defense get a stop, or is Williams going to go back in the field down by 14 in the yeah. fourth quarter? And any hint about Caleb Williams not being engaged because they're out of the mix for a playoff completely a thousand percent false. This guy is locked in as he's ever been. 
Okay, now you dub wants to spend a timeout after looking at the formation. There were three Trojan receivers set off to the right. You know, there were there was a little talk about, oh man, you know, with Caleb now out of the playoff and USC out of the playoff, he, he should shut it down and get ready for the NFL. And of course, people who like to compete don't do that. And Caleb Williams is one of the biggest competitors you're ever going to meet. Didn't even, we asked Lincoln, is that something he, he's like, no, of course not. I mean, this guy is more engaged now and trying to get this thing turned around than he's ever been. So again, if you're selecting a quarterback, yeah, the physical ability is great. But don't you love to hear that? I oh, mean, yeah. Things don't go well. This guy's fighting even harder. Yeah, ha had they lost to Cal, that was going to be the narrative. That there's going to be this deafening chorus of people around him, not at SC, but others saying, wait a minute, the, uh, the way you play, you're putting yourself in harm's way every single game. You're out of the conference race. That's not about him. No, that, that didn't even cross his mind. Washington with four DBs playing like in Inglewood. Williams will be brought down. They didn't have a sack until late in the first half at ZTF and Braylon Rice. And Washington does make a big defensive play. That man huge in setting up the go-ahead touchdown. Penix a couple touchdown passes. Dylan Johnson three touchdown runs. Washington up seven at the break as we check out what Lincoln Riley has to say with Holly. Well, Coach, some real creativity from your play calling. That pitch back from by, or from Branch, uh, Caleb. Tell us about that play and how it unfolded. Yeah, it was a cool play, guys. Executed well, made a big time play. Uh, we're fighting. We gotta, we gotta hit some of these big plays defensively. Some of the key plays are where we've had our breakdowns. You gotta make them against them, and obviously we can't turn the ball over. It's so crazy the time of possession. You had a long first drive. Is there any value in possessing the ball a little longer? There is, for sure. Part of the, the reason we have those, we've hit a lot of big plays, and you're obviously not, you know, we're not complaining about that, but yeah. Yeah, we're going to need some possession drives here. It's that kind of game. You can see both teams are trying to play that way. Thanks so much. Right, thanks. Yeah, you can see the tension there. They're going to need some more creative play calls, more magic from the quarterback because the defense, again, is struggling. Pennings, again, will get the football to begin the third quarter. 35-28, a fun first half of the Coliseum. The Capital One halftime report is coming up right after these messages. Kevin and the guys from the studio. Welcome back to the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. Where was that for the second half? Did you, did you catch your breath? Did you get a snack? <laughs> Saturday Night Football on ABC presented by Capital One. This presentation of the Pac-12 on ESPN. Final year of this conference. Going out with a bang down the stretch. The Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. The Huskies, five touchdowns to four touchdowns for USC if you enjoy defense that kind of half makes you uncomfortable we promised you offensive fireworks but uh defensively somebody's got to figure out something mainly usc because they're on the field first against Penix and company yeah i'm interested to see what they can come up with they've had all week to come up with an answer now you've got 20 minutes to go in there and alex french look at his guys and you you know I, I think what you have is a lack of size up front they struggle to make tackles in space, and they're worried about giving up big shots over top. So those are all your concerns. Where do you start? What do you try to take away? And you got to cheat somewhere to try to do that. The problem with that is Michael Penix is so good at recognizing things that he has an answer for it. But to get back into this game, the last thing you want right now is Penix to go up 14. 333 yards for the Huskies in the first half. Penix is thrown for 173. And a couple of touchdowns. And Gata at the goal line tries it again and breaks the tackle and gets out near the 30. So here comes Michael Penix feeling great tonight after a couple of weeks he was under the weather. And we've seen everything here. This is early. Nice accuracy on a heck of a throw. How about this play? If you haven't seen this, only 11% of his passes outside the pocket. Somehow finds his big tight end. Tevin Cole with a great catch and a touchdown. The awareness. Total progression from the right back to the left, busting coverage and makes SC defense pay for it. Two USC down linemen in this set. And Johnson around the right side to get into the ground after a very short gain. Mentioned that both ground games churning to complement 
the accuracy of these quarterbacks. It's important to, to continue to talk about that because the play callers are recognizing it and using it. Dylan Johnson, seven yards a carry, 118 yards on a night. And we're just warming up here. This is the most points. Oh, he's a trick play. Penix walked away. Johnson gets the direct snap. He was in motion when it was snapped, and there is a flag down. Well, you totally caught USC off guard, especially the middle of that defense. See what this call is. Illegal formation offense. Five yard penalty. Replace second down. The receiver was not facing his line of scrimmage. The dunes say was looking away. I think. Kalen DeBoer is saying, what are you talking about here? What, watch, watch this. When he steps away, watch the defensive line, especially Bear Alexander. He's like, what, what do you guys think over there? So he steps away and watch this. <laughs> he good acting by Penix. Huh? <laughs> Let me check the wristband. What are we doing? What do we got here, Coach? It makes it second and 14. Penix plenty of time. Johnson. On the edge, breaks a couple tackles out across the forward, and they can't get him to the ground. No, I, I, I was going to say, I don't know if you really need to have any trickery to move the football. Why, why not just get the ball to your playmakers here again? Check it down. Now you got to tackle. You know, that, that, that's one thing. Keep the ball in front of you, but with that logic, you got to rally to the football and tackle. They were second and long after that penalty. Now it's first down. Should surprise no one. They lead the Pac-12 in missed tackles, adding up tonight. Not really much of anything you could point to on the SC defensive side as a positive. Yeah, they're short-handed in the back end tonight, but that doesn't begin to explain it. Panics again against the three-man rush. Launching downfield, Giles Jackson just over his outstretched hands. He was ahead of Rowan Wallace. Inches from a touchdown. Yeah, we, we've not seen a ton of these shots downfield. This this is what they're known for. I mean, they, they lead the nation with 52 explosives in their pass game. Misses this just off the fingertips. But to their credit, they found the one-on-one -on -one matchup, but on first and 10, they took that shot. They had four more Kirk explosive plays of 20-plus in the first half. Feel comfortable taking a shot on first down when you can move the ball this easily. Tyler Rogers back in the game. They fake it to him. Yep, right across the middle is Jeremy Bernard. Another first down in SC territory. And the timing, so easy. Yeah, the timing on this. Watch the play fake, and then watch how quickly he sees. First of all, that this is soft. Nobody's nobody's up close on him. The ball just gets out. Right as Bernard comes off of his cut, ball's already in the air. Kalen Bullock's been their best defensive back, according to the SC coaches. Couple of picks in the year. A lot of tackles. He's had a rough night in space. Oh, time in the world to launch. Gets it underneath to Jalen Polk. Stopped about a yard short of the marker by Max Williams. There's emergency here. The fans trying to get cranked up. These SC fans know that, yeah, they can come back, but to go down 14 here when they led the now, entire first half. How about this trips into the boundary up top? But he's looking the other way. Yeah. Lofts it up in the air, and a juggling catch by Odunze. Didn't get it cleanly at the top, but it kind of landed in his hands. He beats Damani Jackson. And Damani Jackson's been attacked tonight. They're going after him. Mentioned trips to the side, to the boundary because they wanted to create this. That's a matchup they want, one-on-one. -on -one. Decent coverage, but there's the physicality of Adunze and how big he is at 6'3". Penix again, three-man rush down the middle. Just getting a hand on it and deflecting it, and it's picked off. Gentry with that massive wingspan. Got up, got a hand on it, and Roland Wallace picked it off. That's the play SC desperately needed. Well, there you go. Gentry is 6'6", six, six. and he needed every inch to climb up and make this play in the middle of the defense. 
Watch him. He eyes it, he sees it, and then he climbs to be able to get up in the air. A great awareness to come up with that interception. So down seven. Looked like they might be down 14. They catch the break that they needed by Gentry tipping that ball and Rollin Wallace seeing it for the interception. Yeah, Gentry's six says Kirk. His wingspan is seven foot six. And Penix didn't quite account for that. Rollin Wallace in good position. So that's the first takeaway by this SC defense to get that break of serve and Williams back to work down only seven. Low snap. And he used to pick it up and hand the ball off. Braylon Trice with the tackle on Jones. Justin Dietrich is the center. His quarterback in a tough spot there. Gives that little false clap. See if he can get the Huskies to jump. Oh, that, and he's also getting a yep. tip on the look of coverage. Lincoln Riley as well, making the adjustments. Williams finds some space in the pocket, finds a man downfield. Taj Washington as the quarterback creates again. Watch, Chris, watch the spatial awareness in that pocket. Sometimes being an athlete is just feeling that in the pocket. You don't have to run around and create. It's just feeling where that opening is and keeping your eyes downfield for the throw. Got a chunk of 34. Keeps it again. Flips it to McCree on the edge. You talked about pocket awareness and feel. Who have you seen that can match that, Williams? I mean, we've seen the... In, in the NFL? Well, anywhere, on any level. I, mean, I, I think Patrick Mahomes does a pretty good job of it. Uh, and, and I think that play we just saw, I can already see it in April. Mel Kuyper and the boys breaking that last play down because of the feel that he had there. I mean, that, that's like a drill you do on a Tuesday when you work to try to avoid that pressure to keep your, your focus downfield on coverage and make an accurate throw. So you can drill it, but still it helps to have oh, yeah. the instincts oh, to be born with that. Absolutely. So we got the ball. Backpedaling. Spinning free. Avoids the sack yet again and takes off. Makes a cut. And just dances out of bounds inside the 35. It's a first down of the scramble. Uh, they're, they're trying to do everything they can. Bandez, I want you to appreciate what he does. 55. Well, watch the big fella. He's going to try to chase him down. Here I come. Here I come. Here I come. Nope, you're not. Little dance around him and out of bounds. Big fella not built to change directions, Kirk, that quickly, right? Here I come. Good effort, though, by the big man. 302 pounds. It's like a big truck that you kind of roll, roll right past him. Oops. <laughs> that's that's a tough ask in space. They already ran 30 yards. So SC quickly threatening. Going to get level again. Fake it to Jones. Williams looks underneath to Brendan Rice. He's going to not be able to come up with it. Had a chance there. Eliza Jackson did a good job defending that. But Rice has had a good year, but some mental lapses and some drops, you know, it, it, that's that's one that he's got to secure and, and put away. Has so much potential. He's really had a great year, but there's just been some moments this year where plays like that happen, where, you know, you got to hold on to that football and keep this momentum going in this drive. If you'd secure that another eh, half a second, it would have been a catch and a fumble. Second and ten. Long pitch to the field. Singer knocked down a yard short. It'll be third down. Allie? Well, guys, we're seeing Caleb Williams make some breathtaking plays with his feet tonight. The spin move in the first quarter, getting out of the pocket, escaping. We know he's done a lot of extra things growing up as a kid. But did you know that he took a hip-hop dance class? We see his ability to balance, move his feet. He's done yoga. This is one of the most well-prepared young men for his role in college football, but I just thought you should break it down. He was a hip-hop dancer, and we've seen some of those moves tonight. Everything comes together to create the athlete you yeah. see, I guess. Yeah. Play fake, looking to throw for it, and Rice 
nowhere near the pass there. Jackson was chasing an interesting call on third and one. Well, Offense out there for fourth down. He, he's got he's got a look there, and it's again it's another run pass option. But instead of throwing a, a quick out the way the previous play was on the run pass option with coverage up tight, he wants to take a shot downfield to Rice because they're confident on third and one. If he misses it, they come right back on fourth and one and get this first down. And let's see if they can. Jones is the tailback. It's a keeper. Williams running for his life. Fires to the end zone. Jeff Ball touchdown. Rice open that time. Unorthodox, but deadly. Throw out the book, right? <laughs> I thought the play was blown up because of Thule. Fourth and one. He wins. That's a big man, their best defensive lineman, and once again, Caleb Williams avoids the pressure, looks up to Rice, who this time holds on to it, and Jackson never finds the ball. How often do you see it? Underthrown ball, corner doesn't see the football, receiver does, comes back, and scores a touchdown. Tenth touchdown reception for Brendan Rice. Yeah, he drops the ball occasionally, but you can see the size, the length, the power. He just shoved Jackson away from him. And SC gets the takeaway, goes 80 yards to tie it up at 35. <laughs> Trophy over there in the USC's football complex earlier this week. Semifinals, by the way, Rose Bowl and the Sugar Bowl. Championship game in Houston. Dr. Pepper presenting the championship trophy, of course. USC got the deflection by Gentry, the interception by Roland Wallace. 80 yards later, the game is tied for the fifth time tonight. And now Penix and company back to work. I'm going to ask you, Kirk, about the defensive philosophy here. You know, they're not blitzing Penix at all. Blitz only twice. For the most part, they've been rushing three and playing coverage against the board's offense. Do, do you like that? Well, I think normally it's a mix. You know, you, you want to mix some some zone and some man. But tonight, I think Alex Grinch, he's coming into this game the last five games combined. They've allowed average of 42 points. Not just tonight has this been a problem. So I think it, what he's trying to do is he knows he's going to give up plays. He's trying to squeeze down in the red zone and hope that they can get a stop down there. They had one this last series when they got the interception. A dude's in the backfield. They flip it to Polk on the end around and tackle made on the edge by Braylon Shelby. Ali? Well, guys, catching up with Kalen DeBoer at the half, he said his offense is playing confident and with composure. He really likes how they're converting in the red zone until that last play. But what they've got to shore up is on defense. He said they are gashing us. They are hurting us in the seams. And we cannot have guys get six, seven yards downfield without getting touched. Just needs better gap control, better eyes, and better protection in those seams. Johnson off the left side. Dylan Johnson with a three touchdown first half just keeps rolling all the way down inside the 35. Yeah, gap control hasn't really been a thing tonight for either defense. Yeah, watch the block by 72. The center, Brailsford, good job again at just kind of sealing that. Johnson cut right off of his block, and he accelerates so quickly for a guy with some good size at 220 pounds. Again, this offensive line deserves a ton of credit. Scott Huff, that offensive line coach, doing a great job with this, uh, this attack up front. That 33-yarder gets him to 151 for the game. Will Nixon spells him on this snap. Penix has pressure. That's a rare blitz. Flags in the secondary. Udunze intended receiver Solomon Bird got after Penix that time. And there's a grab there by the defense. So they did get a little bit more aggressive. One of the better pass rushers on this USC team, Bird, heated it up. But on the back end. And Prophet Brown, 16. There are two fouls on the play. Both fouls are against the defense. Pass interference, defense number 16. That penalty is declined. Roughing personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number 51. Low contact, low hit to the quarterback. 
15 yard penalty automatic first down. Now with Solomon Burr, let's bring in Bill Lamagna. You don't see this call too often, Bill. And Bill, he lost his balance. I don't think that was intentional. He lost his footing there. He lost his balance, but he did thrust into him with a shoulder right into the back of the knee area. Yeah. And those are protected areas yeah. for the quarterback. So that's a correct call. Yeah, there he is grabbing. The jersey, I, but I'm just saying, I, I know it's a call. I'm just saying, I don't think he was intentionally trying to submarine Penix. He's lost his balance. Thankfully, Penix has had two knee injuries in his career already, able to avoid injury that time. Johnson just plows ahead for six more. Going to clinic up front. And, I, and, and to me, with the way this game's going back and forth, that running game, when it comes to trying to keep Caleb Williams and company on the sideline, I know you can score really quick through the air, but necessarily always about scoring fast maybe working clock and running that football wouldn't hurt him at all Johnson this time is swore behind the line big bear Alexander blew it up they lose six yeah when they see the running back to the right right here this tells them to try to hit a gap and assume that the ball is going to go this way and that's what he does he follows the running back from the right to the left by shooting that gap so if he would have pulled that, he still would have brought him down. He was all in because he lined up to the right of the quarterback, assuming he'd get that football. So that sets up a third and ten. Remember the last time they were down here, Gentry had that tip ball. Huskies have been incredibly successful on third down. Tonight we talked about the four touchdowns on third down plays across the middle. It's Westover, and they get a first and goal as a tight end leans down to the eight. More frustration from Grinch. Love this that Penix sees the deep. They show blitz. Look how deep they're getting. Okay, I'll take that. That, that, that is maturity for Michael Penix. That's what you love to see. He, there would be a tendency there to maybe want to take a chance and, and throw that downfield on, on third and ten, but instead saw exactly from pre-snap to post-snap what they did and just took what the defense gave him for a first down. Tybo Rogers darting down to the one. You see the acceleration of this emerging running back. Came close to breaking the plane. And it's like a change of pace from Dylan Johnson to Rogers, right? I mean, he, he, like you said, it, there's a lot of twitch right there in acceleration. Penix, what else? Just muscles in, and Washington uses about three and a half minutes to go 75 yards in seven plays and reclaim the lead. Well, why not get behind this offensive line, especially the center Brailsford? That time, Bear Alexander unable to get penetration, and much like we've seen most of this night, white jerseys pushing around the SCD line. Fans have been on Grinch. You got Trojan legends like Matt Liner speaking out, saying a change is needed. Can't go backwards. Keyshawn Johnson joining in that yeah. chorus as well. They see what the fans see. You got back on top. We mentioned earlier in the first quarter, I really thought to this about Mahomes or about Caleb Williams' his whole career. Reminds you of the mannerisms and in the style of what you see from Patrick Mahomes, ability to create, the way he plays off platform, the way he throws the football. I mean, is that eerily similar with his throw and ability to kind of adjust his arm angle? And he brings the fire and the intangibles that you see from Patrick Mahomes tonight. But it is being tested in a big way tonight in a shootout with Penix and the Huskies. Williams is thrown for two. One for one. They've been in these battles before. This team's been behind a lot. Get down early to Arizona, 17-0. Now they're way behind against Cal. 14 points early fourth quarter rally actually took the lead after trailing Utah before the Utes kicked the late field goal Here's branch Zachariah branch dragged down. It's a good special teams play made by go forth So can Caleb Williams continue to conjure up magic Trojans down seven again
Good year providing aerial coverage, celebrating the challenge of road games everywhere. Are you ready for the road? Good year, more driven. Good news, everybody. We turn the clocks back tonight for daylight savings time. We're going to need an extra hour to recover from today and then yeah. look ahead to next weekend down there between the hedges. Dogs and Rebels. Game day will be there. Yeah, looking forward to that. Huge game. Both those teams avoided potential upsets. Ole Miss knocking off AM. Georgia got a little push, especially early from Missouri that came in there playing with a chip on their shoulder, but the dogs prevail. So that's a big one next week. Dogs have been falling behind frequently and then having a rally. Behind by seven is Williams, who tries to get the ball into a tight space downfield to Deuce Robinson Jackson in coverage. Watch this. This is a, this is the first mistake we've seen where he throws late, late. He's very fortunate that out that Jackson did not jump that. If he would have had his eyes on Caleb Williams, he probably could have been able to come over and make a play on the ball. Williams. Flips it short, and there's Robinson. Flag is out as the freshman is rambling and still going. It's a foot race. Deuce Robinson finally tracked down at the 15. The flag is way back at the 20-yard line at the other end of the field, though. Yeah, I think it's going to be an illegal pick by USC. Like this, will, this one will come back. What a play after the catch. It's a 69-yard game, but you're right. All the action was about 60 yards away from where the football is now. Yeah, I, 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 that's what I saw. That's why Robinson got open. Dominic Campton, one of the Husky DBs, walking up very slowly to the bench. There are two flags on the play. The first flag was for offensive holding. There is no foul because the ball was caught behind the line of scrimmage. During the run, there's a foul for holding against the offense number number 10. It's a 10 yard penalty. It'll be first down. So they get Kyron Hudson, but the penalty was way downfield, so they're going to get a nice gain out of this anyway. Chris, watch, watch this right here. This is what I saw. Watch this pick right here. That's very effective. Yeah, it worked. Freed him up. Got him out in space. I'm surprised they didn't call that one, Bill. Well, the pass didn't cross the line of scrimmage. Right. So you can block downfield if the pass doesn't cross the line of scrimmage. Uh, okay, good. The hold way downfield spots the ball at the 50. It was a 43-yard gain minus the penalty, and now Mario Williams is loose on the edge, and SC is threatening. Yeah, just like that, big play. How about, how about the big receiver, 6'6", 225, showing that kind of speed? I wonder if he went to bed last night expecting he'd have a chance to make a difference in his game. Transfer from Oklahoma. Williams gets around the edge. Oh my goodness, he faked out ZTF a couple of times. Eventually, the big fellow did a somersault as he was trying to get near number 13 in space. <laughs> He's had a great game, but that is a tough thing to do for a, a defensive end. You're right. battle it's, a, here. it's a couple different shakes. Watch four. He goes airborne after a couple of jukes. He's had to heck with this. <laughs> Actually did a pretty good job to keep him to a two-yard game. Three yards. Taj Washington is in the backfield. Williams running out of time. Escapes again, directing traffic. Gets a block and just flips it away. Goes tumbling into the Huskies bench after the incompletion. And it's it's really his lower half, his strength that's that along with the quickness and the instincts and the awareness, but his strength to be able to pull out of there and really good coverage. They talk about plastering, meaning when he scrambles, they work very hard on the receivers or the defensive back staying on those receivers as he buys five seconds, six seconds, seven seconds. Tough thing to do, but they did it there. Well, Caleb tries to catch his breath. Well, to the Nassenawa who chased him down, he's got to be sucking wind at this point. And third and seven, Washington 
gets blocks and gets a first down down near the 20. Uh, they go to their their best receiver in a big moment here and he's got two great blockers in front of him deuce robinson again helping out mccree helping out and you can see what taj washington can do with the ball after the catch fourth catch for washington closing in on a hundred yard night lake brown who scored a touchdown on his first carry of the season, his first action in eight games to the right of Williams. Using almost all the play clock here. Every bit of it. For the end zone. Back shoulder throw. Touchdown, Mario Williams. What a pitch from Caleb. Chris, you, you, you called it the back shoulder. Defender doesn't see it, secures the ball. The left foot is down. The progressive pylon cam give you even a better look at the left foot. Got to make sure he holds it to the ground than he did. Mario Williams, often the forgotten receiver of this bunch, makes a big play here to potentially tie this game up. And how about the location of that football? Williams featured in that drive, third touchdown pass for Williams he's approaching a 300 yard night and this game is tied again sixth time I want you to watch where he releases this football look at the coverage right here that, that, that's what he's looking at and he throws it to a spot that's that's a lot of work and a lot of timing between a quarterback and a receiver Mario Williams came with him from Oklahoma. These two know each other as well as anybody that he throws to. But did you see when he released that ball, the trust that he had in Williams to come back? And that's just perfect timing. Nothing that the defender could do to stop that from being a touchdown. Penix's turn, minute 41 in this third quarter. He spent a lot of energy in that drive. Just look, look, you can see, I mean, the wear and tear. He, he puts it all out in the field every single game. They usually have to play all 60 minutes and then some. Get, well, get, get a breather out there. That, that's the part of these two that I love so much. You're, you're looking at two of the, the ultimate competitors that want to win for their team. But that view right there tells you what they're going through it's exhausting but they're they're fighters right it's going to go down to the last moment of this game and Gata gets to the edge and he's going to be penned in and find the run out at the 28 yard line tonight's Aflac trivia question Roma Dunze for the Huskies Jalen Polk both averaging 100 receiving yards per game this season let's go back to 2000 what two power five teams have had a duo average 100 plus receiving yards in a single season. Maybe the early 2000 Canes. Yeah. Remember Andre Johnson, Santana Moss? Did, did, did Chase and Jefferson and then Joe Burrow's 19? Oh, yeah. Average 100, yeah. maybe? Yeah, that, that'd be a good one. There's a first down run for Johnson, who hammers forward for about five. This dynamic duo, Pope, came from Texas Tech. Dunze, an original Washington recruit. They don't even have Jalen McMillan. Hopefully he can get healthy. He's been battling an ankle problem all season long. You get him back and it gets even scarier because he's a big time oh, receiver. Man. There's a pre-snap flag and a false start from the Huskies. Oh, Tanu, left tackle, who's had a great night. False start. Offense number 55. Five-yard penalty. Penalties have been a problem for the Huskies. Not so far tonight, but not a huge problem. That's six. Final minute of the third quarter now, second and ten. Johnson 
Makes a cut. Dylan Johnson just building on the best night of his career. Gentry's got him down, but a nine-yard game. How great is it to have space like that? You're looking at a big physical back. You run behind that left side. Fatano leading the way, 55, and he's running downhill. Doesn't get touched till he's seven yards downfield. Penix pulls it and shows his strength muscling for a first down. Damani Jackson collided with him. We, we've seen that from Caleb Williams. Here we see it from Penix at a critical moment. Third and short reminding you he's athletic and can pull that down and keep it himself. This running game, boy, they are balanced tonight. 226 on the ground, 238 through the air. NFL scouts looking on. Two brilliant quarterbacks and their playmakers dueling in the Coliseum. 15 minutes to play. Huskies win streak. Perfect season on the line. USC's chance at a Pac-12 title at stake on the other side. 42 apiece. Back after a word for your ABC stations. USC tradition. Travel around. And the Trojans who are pointed at the Olympic cauldron. It will be host of the Olympics for the third time in 2028. First back in 1932. Final quarter. Tied at 42. Which defense can get a stop here in the fourth period, get a break of serve? Penix backpedaling, firing, and Polk was grabbed. Pass interference on Roland Wallace on that, that deep slant, too, was running free. Remember you asked me, what else can they do? And I said, you know, you mix in some blitzing, you mix in some man, but now your corner's got to hold up on islands. And this is what you risk, either a big play or a pass interference. And he grabs onto him, grabs onto the hand, prevents him from getting to his spot. That's why they make the call. So it's a bit of a roll of the dice, because if you don't get to Penix, he's begging you to blitz and play man coverage with the receivers that he has. And blitzes have not been very effective against Penix in his Washington career, that's for sure. One of the best quarterbacks against the extra rusher. They also do a pretty good job picking it up. Johnson just nice forward, picks up about six more. Jamal Muhammad got him down. That play was blown up. He was trying, he was designed to go to the right. And you got to give the defensive line led by Bear Alexander credit. They, they blew that play up, but there's the versatility of Dylan Johnson. Johnson's got it again. Barreling down deep inside the red zone. 40 with 200 yards now. 20 more gets it to 191. Okay, look, look at the look at that hole. I mean, it's a great run, and I love Dylan Johnson. But my gosh, that, that play just opened up because of the slanting and angling by that defensive line. Nobody's there. Yards before contact, as you said, enormous tonight. Penix. With Johnson working back towards him. Penix is scanning deeper downfield and just throws it away. That's not, as you said, really his game. Sprinting to the edge and trying to create. No, no, not like I said, about 11% of his passes all year have been outside the pocket. Now he's athletic and he can make plays on the run. And, you know, you're, you and I think saw the same thing that Bernard broke free late. The defender that had him locked down had to leave him to take the potential threat of Penix running. And if he would have just held on one last second, he could have picked up some good yards. Will Nixon in the game. Sixth red zone visit for the Huskies. Five for five touchdowns so far. The Trojans are there to swarm. Keon Barnes made the play, and Barnes sets up a third and long now. Yeah, you, you, you'll see movement here, and then they work around. They're, one thing that Alex Grinch tries to do is manufacture by moving defensive linemen that are a bit undersized. That time it pays off. Did Penix come up with uh, something special again in third and long? They're showing pressure with the two linebackers mugged up, walked up. Usually when they show that, they bail. Let's see if they... Grinch is going to call a timeout, or SC is. Third and nine. Huskies threatening again to reclaim the lead. Yeah. 
Athletic trivia question. I got half of it right. Yeah, I'm proud of you. Chase and Jefferson did each average 100 yards. Go back a little farther. Tavon Austin and Sidman Bailey for the Mountaineers in 2012. I forgot about that. That's a good one. Third and nine. Huge play here. Off the defensive timeout for SC. Pressure comes. It's picked up. Penix has time, directing traffic, running out of time, spins and is sacked. Eric Gentry makes his second big play tonight. Well, that, that's coverage. Great job here of just freelancing and, and just being a robber by Kalen Bullock, one of the better safeties in the country. This time he's just kind of taken everything away by sitting there reading the eyes of Penix. Penix trying to direct traffic from back there. But by the time he thought he may have found somebody, they take it away. First sack of the night, Brady Gross, his first field goal attempt in the last few weeks. Hasn't tried one in the last couple of games. This from 43 to go back on top. And he knocks it through. So, 12 touchdowns, about time for a field goal. 45, 42, UW. Saturday Night Football is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Boost Infinite. Get unlimited wireless and the latest iPhone every year. It's a spa week here for Curtis Wilson. The All-State bus back to that week <laughs> in L.A. Curtis tell me he's getting a little spa work. What's your All-State good hands play this weekend? A lot to choose from. Yeah, it's better than traveling 3,000 miles from Tallahassee, L.A. the week before. <laughs> this is the... The All-State good hands play. Jeremiah Trotter with a pick six. Clemson kind of backed into a corner, upset. Dabo was upset. They showed up with bad intentions. With Georgia Tech coming up. North Carolina and South Carolina. Take that, Tyler South Spartanburg. <laughs> well, they, they salvaged their season with that big win at home today. Third loss for Notre Dame. Branch from the five. It was a fair catch. Back to Kevin Nagande. Chris, time now for a Chick-fil-A move on the field. And Jalen Milrow, the first quarterback in Bama history with four rushing touchdowns. They got six rushing touchdowns. That is Alabama. Here's another storyline. Look at this. Jaden Daniels hit all night. Dallas Turner playing the biggest hit right there. Wow. Daniels shaking up. Try to get on the field and stay on the field. He's in the tent right now. Bama has scored 21 unanswered. They're up 42-28. Back to you. Here's Kevin. Bama flexing. Dallas Turner went code red on the quarterback. Could have been the 10. So SC down three. Plenty of time to work with. And it off to Robbie Brown. He's slippery and shifty and squirts for about 14. Boy, every time he touches the ball, you just hold your breath. He hits that crease, and he's got a different gear. Austin Jones is a physical back. He's done a good job tonight, but, man, 14 comes in there. You better be careful. He gets through that second level. He'll split the safeties. Williams in the flat. Gets it to him again, and weapon in space. Scoots for another nice six-yard game. Yeah, it's great to bring fresh legs in a game like this. And you can feel that. Not only does he have speed, he has fresh legs. And that's a different gear. Bring Austin Jones back in the game. Impressive job by this running back room. Marshawn Lloyd is a high impact player, a tremendous back for us. See, he's been reduced to kind of motivator over there. But Jones has stepped up. Darwin Barlow has a touchdown. Malik Brown, we're seeing make an impact. He sees blitz. Man coverage. Huskies bring it. Ball quickly out. And it's Taj Washington reacting well. Got open. He stopped a yard short of the marker. Well, he sees everybody up here. He sees a receiver with a nice cushion. So he just gets the ball out in a hurry. They actually dropped their edge. So simulated pressure. But it looked like they were going to outnumber him. So smart seeing the man and just getting the ball out of his hands quickly. Show yourself to the quarterback. Washington did that nicely there. Need a yard on third. 
Two tight ends into the left side. Jones is the back. Jones has got it. Hurdles the line for a first down. Austin Jones rambling deep into Washington territory. Well, we're over 100 yards now. We've talked a lot about this Washington offensive line, but SC on short yardage there. They win the battle at the line of scrimmage and the point of attack to give Jones a chance to go up in the air. Really selling out, Washington selling out there to try to come up with that stop. Once he broke free, that initial surge, it was a lot of room. Williams, to Mario Williams, grabbed on the edge. His tackle in space, a five yard gain, could have been more. Keep going to that run pass option. We've seen more of it in the second half than we did the first. We saw a few more zone reads in the first half, but he could have handed that off or just gotten it out there to, to his gifted receiver. And with three on two, he decides to go to Mario Williams. Pretty good defense, like you said. Brown. That time. Oh, wow, was he shoved forcefully by Dom Hampton. The USC bench tempers are flaring there. They're after Hampton. There's no flag on the play. It was I, aggressive. I thought the follow through by Hampton sometimes can draw the foul. He's in bounds, right, Bill? And then the oh, that push right there. What do you think? Borderline gave him a pass, probably by the flow of the game today. So I'm okay with the no call. Your flow of the game pass. All right, third and seven. <laughs> No pressure. Ball quickly in the hands of Singer. Singer with flags flying, still running. Actually, it's Taj Washington into the end zone. There's a couple of flags down. This one's going to come back, I think. And it's come back with Deuce Robinson. I think that's who they're looking at. He's done a good job of blocking downfield, but he grabbed on to Elijah Jackson. Offense number 19. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Now this Three young freshman, 6'6, 225, great baseball player, I hear as well from Harold Reynolds, but far right, big physical guy. See the jersey right there, grabbing onto it. And really good look there. He and Elijah Jackson have dueled tonight, both in coverage and also blocking downfield. We have okay. a Mafoa Masao is down on the field and now he's going to limp off to the Washington sideline. All spotted back at the 30 after the penalty. It's third and 13. Back out of the pressure, and now the pocket collapsing. This time, Caleb Williams cannot escape. Dropped way behind the line. A huge loss to Nuafi. Got him. Movement here frees him to be able to come around the edge. You know, he's a defensive tackle that can play defensive end. He just doesn't give up on the play. I mean, Caleb Williams obviously has an advantage, and when he sees that pressure, usually he spins out of it, but this time, 260 pounds, able to finish the play and get Caleb Williams to the ground. He had a first down at the 27, Kirk. The penalty moved him back. That was a big loss of 12 yards. Not a good job by Williams to take that sack to move him out of field goal range. And a rare punt tonight. Chaplitsky knocks it down inside the 10 as the Huskies defense gets a stop. Up three still. I see students trying to make some noise, make it tough on this Washington offense. 
Download the Taco Bell app to learn more about the Taco Bell Live Moss Student Section of the Year contest. You know, Kalen DeBoer told us that Washington has had chances, Kirk, each of the last three weeks to really put opponents away. Led Oregon by 11 in the third quarter. Came right down to it. Yeah, you know, you're right. Against Arizona State, they couldn't finish drives. Stanford, turnovers cost them. Now, a chance up three to go in a long march and perhaps secure the game if they can reach the end zone. Johnson on the pitch. Gets the drive started with a big chunk play. It's a foot race. Dylan Johnson finally shoved out of bounds at the 35. But this is a massive night for the former Mississippi State Bulldog. 53 more. Watch the blocks by center out here. A great block on the outside by Jalen Polk right there, too. 73 gets out there. All the receivers and Dylan Johnson having a night you can dream about. 244 yards rushing for number seven. And the three touchdowns in the first half. His son, Dylan Jr., we talked about him. I don't think he's quite old enough to grasp what his dad has done, but someday they'll tell him about his dad's night in the Coliseum. Play clock all the way down at two. Penix doesn't want to score too quickly here. Flags out in the holding zone as he chucks it downfield. And another flag as Adunze was being defended. So may get offsetting here. I think you'll have offsetting. A hold by Washington in the backfield once Penix got out of the pocket and then the, the P.I. downfield. Doing a better job at taking away those deep crossers. So good adjustments here by SC secondary and Alex Grinch because there are fouls against both teams. These fouls will offset and will replay first down. Holding offense number 20, pass interference defense number one. These fouls offset, replay, first down. Chris, downfield, you don't know about the holding penalty. Here, here's the hold on the offensive line, and it was going to back Washington up until SC grabbed the Dunes. They downfield. Yeah, yeah, Gentry blitzing, and Rogers ends up going, grabbing onto that jersey, and then here we got downfield, Jackson. And anytime you lose the football against Penix, get ready. The ball's coming your way. Gentry had the pass tipped earlier that was picked up by Roland Wilson. And then the sack of Penix, which killed a drive earlier. He's made two big plays tonight. Tybo Rogers spelling Johnson. Knocked down by Damani Jackson. I want to watch him, the left tackle. Watch when he gets outside. Look at him. You're talking about a 300 pounder. He's 15, 20 yards downfield until he has somebody to block. There were not a lot of Trojans lining up to take him on. Rodgers harassed early. That was good penetration by Mason Cobb from the linebacker position. And then Bear Alexander wrapped him up. Third and long coming up. Great play by Bear Alexander that time. Able to use those hands to get off of his block and able to help out on Mason Cobb. Washington six of nine on third downs, as you see. They're in the fringe field goal range right now for Gross on third down. Throw near the marker. I think Giles Jackson will come up a yard short. They're signaling first down. The players are, but the officials will spot it short. Fourth down. Ball brings him back. He runs a pretty good route, but the ball's thrown low. He has to come back to it, and that's what kept him short by about a yard in that first down. How crucial is this? Can USC somehow find a way to deny the Huskies on this fourth and one? If they can't, Washington gets closer and can chew on more clock here. Replay is looking at this to see if he made the line to gain. But it appeared from what we saw, he was short, and well, the Bill, this, hit this, didn't this, knock him back. Bill, let's look at this look, though. Look at this. I've never seen this line. This is a red nice. line up there. Just yeah. the ball cross that red line before he's driven back. Oh, sure does. That's a really good look. That's a beautiful look. You like the orange line? Yeah, Billy Fan of the orange yeah, line. Yeah, that's a nice job there. I stand corrected. That does look like wow. a first down. Yeah. Ball. The same the same thing applies to the goal line, right, Bill? The ball breaking 
that plane, that's a heck of a tool for the officials to use. Without it, I don't know if you could say that he no. came across that first down mark. I'm a fan of that. That's that's great, for, especially for that situation. Dan Antionetti, replay After official. After review, the receiver made the line to gain. It'll be first down at the 27 and a half yard line. I'll tell you, Bill, without, without that, it's not as easy have. without that tool. The look, first looks we had, I, yeah. I thought yeah. it was short. Yeah. But that line, that proved it. Yep. Coming into this drive, we have 12 touchdowns, 87 points, and over 1,000 yards of offense. And a field goal is the difference, of course, at this point. But this is a big one because the first down, he was petting the chance. Not only score a touchdown, but eat up enough clock that would make it very, very tough for Riley and his offense to climb back. Penix under center. Rodgers lined up seven yards behind the line, takes the pitch, and spins forward inside the 25. I go back to your comment that you made as this drive started about Washington having some issues with finishing games off in recent weeks. And now you have this opportunity. They had a huge run by Dylan Johnson, and now it's slowed down. Getting to that four-minute mark, up three. Execution and game management equally important here. Odunze, or excuse me, Giles Jackson. It's Jackson with a catch and another first down. Just a great job by Penix here. Stack the receiver. Ball is out early before he even turns, and Jackson able to, because he got it out so early, catch it, get his head turned around, and see where he could go to get those first down yards. Adunze and Polk, the top two receivers, both split wide to the right. SC was showing blitz. Now Washington makes an adjustment. Now you see they walk out of it. Blake clock worked down. Penix, long throw. Polk back pedaling, makes the catch at the 12. I love how he pre-snap gets a feel. He saw blitz. He saw man coverage. He looks to the sideline, and then USC also adjusts, and he finds that easy throw there to pull. All going to come down to the red zone execution or a stop by SC. They were five for five touchdowns the first trip. Settled for a field goal last time in here. A field goal, of course, keeps SC very much in this. Don't forget the run game at Dylan Johnson. There he is, Johnson. Around the end, diving out of bounds. Stopped about a yard and a half short of the goal line by Fagans. Yeah, you, you get to the edge so easy on this defense, you might as well run the big man and, and use those blockers out in front. Fagans very fortunate, undersized at 180 pounds, trying to set the edge. Tough thing to do for a, a nickelback. To the Huskies. About a yard away from a double-digit lead in the waning minutes. Quickly to the line. Johnson. Touchdown number four. Ninety-one yard drive. Flawless execution. And the Huskies have Caleb in a deep hole now. Yeah, when in doubt, you go behind that left side. They've had a great night. The big tight end, Quentin Moore, often has been lining up. 88 on that left side. And they, they've just been collapsing down and opening things up for Dylan Johnson. And I know we're going to talk about these quarterbacks, and we should, because it's been a great duel between those two. But I'm glad we've paid homage to the offensive line and Dylan Johnson and balancing, balancing out this Husky attack because it's not just his passing game. One of the most pass-heavy offenses in the country has rushed for 319 yards tonight. 256 by that man. The lead's 10. NFL scouts Kirk came to see the quarterbacks, but Dylan Johnson has given them a show tonight. Yeah, he's been doing it all year, but it's a different level for him. And I think the thing to remember is this offensive line, the way they've helped him out. 199 yards before contact.
gives you an idea of the way they've opened things up. That was the big run, and he's able to finish it off. Those for the end zone. Physical guy. Remember, he came over from Mississippi State in that air raid offense. Wanted an opportunity to get to the next level. Wanted to play with Penix in this system of Ryan Grubb. And he has a magical night tonight. Branch on the return. He spun down. Yeah, the 199 yards you mentioned before contact, that's an incredible number. That's the most by any running back in the FBS this season. So credit the guys up front and also point to a sieve-like run defense for SC. Holly? Well, guys, Dylan Johnson has been heroic tonight because in the third quarter, I happened to notice on the sideline, he was limping. He was banged up. His calves have cuts, nicks bruises he has run so hard tonight but he's also taken quite a beating for him to have the stamina to be this in the fourth quarter a heroic performance he has fought through it because there's a lot of scouts here i know he's thinking about what's next for him and he's showing them that he can be durable over under vacuum puncture treatments this week three and a half so now it's a 10 point deficit with 213 caleb williams needs something quickly works underneath Washington gets eight. I think respectfully he's thinking about trying to keep his team undefeated and win a Pac-12 championship and win oh, yeah. a national championship. I think this guy is focused and dialed in on doing whatever he can for this team as anybody. No doubt, but he knows it's a big stage. Sure. Washington, another short catch. They'll move the six. Fox stops momentarily. And with Caleb Williams with two timeouts, you know, in college football, of course, out of bounds, and now that you're under two minutes, you have opportunities with first downs the two timeouts patient approach to the start of this drive Jones gets about 10 more it'll stop again for a couple seconds here and with Washington having a two possession lead they're, they're in that that nickel mindset that prevent so smart to just you're gonna get first down yards might as well take them whether it's a run or a throw payload running out of time does escape scanning he'll scamper for about seven into Washington territory once he scrambled to his left he had Austin Jones who didn't really work to get open very much and neither did Brendan Rice so he didn't have anybody to throw the football to so smartly runs it gets out of bounds to kill that clock Let's see if Washington pressures or sits back They rush four. Again, Caleb on the edge, incomplete, trying to find a sprinting branch. Down to a minute 13 now. Yeah, you wonder if a little bit of fatigue setting in there. That, that's a ball, once he got out, got out into the open, that's a ball that he almost 10 out of 10 times makes that throw because branch pulled away from the defender. Pause for the quarterback to catch his breath, gather his strength for this third down play. Five receivers to choose from. Huskies show pressure. It's picked up. Brown dragged down. It'll be fourth down. Actually lost a yard. Go for it. Tackled him. The clock is stopped. Timeout taken. The final one that, or excuse me, he has one more to work with, Riley. But that play by Goforth in space, the USC transfer with the St. John Bosco, you know he's fired up to play in this game against his former teammates. And I think Caleb Williams just trying to get the ball out to, to Brown, thinking he can win one-on-one, -on -one, and Goforth made a great play. So you got to get four yards to keep any faint hope alive then you got to get the ball down quickly you, get, you just score obviously in an onside kick what a night for Michael Penix he's thrown for 256 matches the exact rushing total of Dylan Johnson Our all world set of Susha Mark and Mento beating yeah. great numbers on his birthday tonight yeah, happy birthday shot of the Husky faithful that have made this trip. They have a big contingent over to our right. A lot of the SC fans have given up. They've called it a day, but one of the great fan bases in college football is still here and enjoying themselves. They'll head home next week to welcome the Utes to Husky Stadium. Tough schedule continues. 
Here it is. Williams got to have four. And incomplete. Throw was wide and low. Intended for Washington, and Washington is going to come to the Coliseum. The first visit here since 2015 and hand UFC a third loss and a second in the conference and extend their own winning streak to 16. Yeah. Heck of a battle here between these two offenses. The play callers, Lincoln Riley, doing everything he could with Caleb Williams and, and Ryan Grubb and Kalen DeBoer doing it with Penix and Dylan Johnson. Huskies got tested here at the Coliseum, but they survived this. You said Utah coming up. They go to Corvallis after that at Oregon State. They have Washington State in the Apple Cup at home and more than likely a shot to go to Vegas and to play in the Pac-12 championship. This team's a real deal. Number five in the rankings and not going anywhere. Tough thing for USC. You go to Odson where the Ducks scored 63 today against Cal. Uh, that's not going to be any easier to stop Bo Nix. I, I just feel that we saw it a few weeks ago in Seattle. It's a long way to go. But can you imagine if Washington and Oregon keep winning and those two happen to match up in a Pac-12 championship on a Friday night? Oh, I can imagine. That, that, I'm that thinking about be, it since we're up in Seattle. Me too. That would be one of the best games of the year. Already was the first one. Caleb Williams, a competitor to the end. Did have a crucial fumble in this game. It was a big play as he gave the Huskies a short field, but he throws for 312 and three touchdowns. What a duel. Two very special quarterbacks, two very talented offenses, two defenses that have been challenged all season, and the chorus of discontent in Los Angeles about this SC defense, Kirk. The fact is it's just going to grow louder and louder as Washington gains 572 tonight. Two offensive heroes for the Huskies. Penix and Dillis Johnson are with Holly. Well, guys, this was a crazy stat kind of night because you threw for about the same exact number of yards that he rushed for. How simpatico and balanced was this offense tonight? Man, it was crazy, man. We knew all week. You know, we, we knew what the work that we needed to put in, and we did it all week, man. The offensive line did a heck of, heck of a job all week long of making sure they were working on finishing and making sure that we were working on getting this, this uh, DJ out and making these big-time plays. And, man, for us to come out and execute and do it today, man, it was a, it was a great thing. How much pressure is on the offense, Dylan, when they come down and score? You guys have to come down and score the back-and-forth nature of this game. Oh, it's no pressure. I mean, we knew, we knew what was going to happen. When we first came out here, we knew it was going to be a back-and-forth game. We just had to come out with the W, you know. We just had to come out with the win. Washington hasn't played, hasn't won in this building for a long time. How special is it for you that you're the team to do it and you stay undefeated on the season? Man, every win is special. You know, um, you know, this is a great football team that we just played, and um, they do a lot of great things. But, you know, like I said, man, I, I believe in us. And uh, like, like we, our motto is us versus us, and that's, that's what we come in each and every day, trying to work to get better and push each other to be better. But uh, it's just a special win just because it's another one, you know, uh, adding another one to the column. All right, and Dylan, I know it's probably too late for DJ to be staying up, but how proud is he got to be of dad tonight? Oh, trust me, he's, he's, he's definitely proud of me. And this game was for him, you know, for my family, you know. It's, it's, a, special, it's a special moment for me. It definitely is, for real. Thank you so much, yes, young man. Ma Enjoy the win, guys. Thank you. The guy who said left the comfort zone in Starkville to come all the way up here to play a long way from home to help his family out. Helen Board improves to 20 and 2 since he took over a program that was in deep trouble this is a four win team two yeah. seasons ago yeah it's amazing what he did last year and he had a veteran team coming back this year and they knew they had a chance he's a special coach by the way i was watching on the field the pregame players unsolicited coming over hugging him telling him they loved him i mean he's created a culture this these are the kind of cultures you dream about having there's a great look that's real this is authentic stuff So good. This team loves you and lo we love them so much. Yeah. He genuinely appreciates what these guys bring to the table. On the other side, Caleb Williams and jumping up and yeah. laying in the arms of family there. Yeah. Tough night battle sure did
He knows the reality of what yeah. a third loss means. That's tough. But as brilliant as his two years will be in L.A., it's not going to result in a Pac-12 championship. Yeah. Played well, led, led his team, did all he could. He just came up a bit short. It's part of the game. All State presents the CFP rankings, which, Kirk, I wouldn't think figure to change much based on today. Oklahoma obviously will will drop out with the loss of Bedlam. I wouldn't think so. Ohio State got tested. Georgia got tested. Florida State, not their best performance, but won the shootout here. Oregon, you're asking Oregon and Alabama, the one-loss teams that are trending upward. Texas very nearly took a damaging loss, escaped. And we're entering now November and the, and the stretch run when the pressure will mount and these teams will have to handle what lies ahead. And for Washington, it's a serious gauntlet in the deepest conference in the country. You're right. It's every single week. And, and to go from this game, the emotions of this game, you go right into Utah with Kyle Whittingham. I mean, that, that, that is not the team you want to see the next week after a game like this. They need, need to get rested up and get ready, put their big boy pads on for Utah coming to town. And leave them on for Oregon State, too, for That's that right. game, too, because yeah. they're going on the road yeah, right after that. Yeah, and a rivalry game in Washington State. Penix not letting go of that football. And Caleb Williams, a competitor to the end, trots off to a third USC loss this season. Huskies win it by 10. We enjoyed being here. Bill Bennell produced the game. Jimmy Plant directed it. Thanks in the booth to Kurt Theodore Marcamento, Darren Brown, Mike Black, or Bill Lamagna, Holly Kirk, Kirk Street, Chris Fowler saying so long. Except on the West Coast, your local news of most of these ABC stations.